Oh, you're doing mute, miss. Tick tock, time to rock. Good Hello. evening, good morning, good afternoon to everyone who's watching from all around the world. It's David Wood, your friendly neighborhood philosopher, with a prophet, prophet. A prophet. Prophet of apostasy. A prophet who proves that Islam is false because there is, in fact, a prophet after Muhammad. His name is. The apostate prophet. Indeed. How are you doing, are you doing AP? Indeed. I'm doing very, very good. Um, thank you for this very dramatic introduction. Um, I appreciate it. I hope I deserve it. And if I don't deserve it, then I will work for it. And yeah, good. How are you doing? How are you holding up against I'm all the abuse? I'm good. I'm, I'm actually. I'm very. I'm very amused how everything has uh, turned out so far. We have been. Uh, you know, it all started. It all started by just me making a debate challenge. That's what set it <laughs> off. <laughs> that's all. But that's all it was about. You didn't realize the under. You didn't recognize the underlying powder keg. Uh -huh. You didn't realize everything that was brewing. Hijab was in full panic mode because of the holes in the narrative, and he's getting messages every day. Oh, I'm leaving Islam. I can't stand it. You guys are lying to me. And he's just looking for something. He's looking for something to take out his anger on. And all of a sudden, hey, you want to debate me? And then, rawr, rawr. you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's insane. He was like, um, <laughs> he, he made a debate challenge to me before, you know, like a long time ago. And I rejected him because he went very uh, insane about it. He, he, he called me a cockroach. He insulted all my uh, subscribers and followers. He insulted my family, my mother and sister and all that. And I was like, hey, if you're going to talk like that, I'm not going to debate you. You know, First, communicate like a, like a proper person to me. And... Um, Anyway, after a while, I told him that he can have a de that we can have a debate if he's going to act properly. And then he said that he cannot act properly. He will only debate me if he can insult me. And he's a man of his word, which is why uh, he needs to <laughs> he needs to commit to the agreement that he will be allowed to personally insult me. And I said, okay, fine, let's do that. So I challenged him to an online debate. <clears throat> he rejected again. I challenged him. He rejected. I challenged him. He made up excuses. I challenged him. He said, okay, you only if I'm uh, allowed to insult you. I said, whatever, just do it. I challenged him again. He said, okay, I accept it. And then he said, where are we meeting? And I said, what are you talking about? Where are we meeting? I said, online. And he was like, oh, look, he's making up excuses because he's actually scared of me. And then he... He, he burned it as quick as possible so that there is no room for negotiation left. Started call, started saying I should commit suicide, started attacking my wife. So he, that, that's all it was about. And then it went and, th and then it went into all the, the mess that we got into and until now, you know. So it all started just with me saying, hey, I want to have a debate with you on the topic. Is Islam the truth? And I told him, I know. You know, I'm not going to make a claim that you are scared of me. I'm not going to make a claim that, that I will defeat you or anything else or that I'm better than anybody else who has debated you. I just think that you would not debate this topic with anybody. And he was like, yeah, I debated Islam. I debated Islam. I said, no, you didn't. You never debated Islam itself with anybody. You always debated other people's ideologies or God or this and that. You are scared of debating this topic. If you are not scared, let's do this. And people demanded it. His own audience demanded that he does it, but he didn't do it. And so in the end it led to him making veiled uh, rape threats even so <laughs> yep that's gonna get him into some trouble here sorry i said the word but <laughs> what no not not this i didn't this isn't monetized at least i don't think this no <laughs> um yeah uh yeah so yeah that this that's coming up this week i haven't been to his channel since i warned him to take down the tweets so uh -huh. but i'm assuming given the personality type that i'm going to have to be more forceful in order to get him to take him down and i haven't heard anyone say he took the tweets down so i'm assuming that he didn't take the tweets down no. which means that i'm about to escalate my threat people don't people don't people don't understand people don't understand i mean what I'm, the, the, the case I'm going to go ahead and make in a, in a video as far as people who don't understand what's going on, you look at how women are treated in the Muslim world, 
you can go to various surveys. You'll find that 11 out of 12 of the worst places in the world to be a woman are Muslim-majority countries. Uh, you go to a different study by a completely different organization, you'll find out that 18 of the 20 worst places in the world to be a woman are Muslim-majority countries. Mm -hmm. um, you look at what happens with, you know, the grooming gangs and, you know, the most, the, the, the case that we heard about most was in the UK. But I've been hearing stories about other places, Northern Europe, Australia, for years, where these young girls are being raped, groomed, things like that. And so you just look at the attitude towards them. And then you have someone like Muhammad Hijab come along who says, you know what? We're going to start an online campaign of harassing women. And people want to say, well, here's, ba here's the basic response from Christians, non-Christians, everyone. Well, I guess we disagree, but it's not like we're going to do anything mm -hmm. about it to make you stop, right? Because at the end of the day, there's, there's one way to make them stop. It's in the Quran, right? <laughs> it's in the Quran, Surah 6, verse 108. If people are going to heap abuse on your God and your religion... If you don't stop some sort of insulting that you're doing, you're supposed to, as a Muslim, stop. In other words, if they give you warning, because that's the historical background. The pagan said, if you don't stop mocking our gods, we're going to mock Allah. And the, the command came from Allah. All right, stop mocking their gods. Stop stop doing what you're doing. Yeah. So that's 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 the golden ticket right there, ladies and gentlemen. The, the, plan, <laughs> the plan for making them stop is in there. And yet, it's, a, it's extremely difficult to sell this to Christians, right? To, to get Christians to, to, to get their minds around the idea, guys, if someone's doing some horrible behavior, and he's a Muslim, and you want him to stop, there's a way in Islam to make him stop. And the, the Christian response is, oh no, well, we don't want to hurt their feelings, and I, ca I can't get my mind around that. He's talking about starting an, an online campaign of harassing women and girls with... Uh, violent sexual imagery of rape and torture, and and he's he's focusing on normalizing this so that he's telling all his he's not he's not doing it personally he's telling he's telling everyone all his followers to go out and do this so he's he's basically saying guys we're about to change things we're about to change our approach now we're in, now we're bringing in a new dimension where we heap endless uh, sexual torture abuse bondage, all this stuff. We heap this abuse on women and girls and the internet. Now, I look at that and I say, well, if there's a way I can stop that, I believe I'm morally obligated to stop that. Uh -huh. I believe I'm morally obligated to stop that. And lo and behold, I do know a way that I can stop that. And the Christian response is, well, yeah, I guess it's pretty bad if he's going to do that, but you can't, you can't make him stop if it's going to hurt someone's feelings. I've never, I'll never understand that. You, you can't stop a campaign of abuse if the way you stop it is going to hurt people's feelings. I'll never, I'll never, I'll never understand. I find it insane. I have seen responses from, uh, from, from Christians, from atheists, from ex-Muslims, people who are former Muslims who left Islam, who found that uh, that our response. That the response of uh, you know disrespecting and eating the Quran was too much was went too far. Imagine this. I sat here. <laughs> I sat it's like here, corn of the cob. And, and we have we have together <laughs> read how <laughs> Muhammad Hijab talked about harassing each of our wives and ourselves. And he was making excuses about harassing our wives. He was saying, well, those are, they have public profiles, so we can't talk about them. But he was only talking about them because they happen to be our wives. And he wants to make the point that he can also attack our loved ones because we are attacking his beloved prophet, which is a very strange comparison to make. Mm -hmm. uh, considering that relationship that uh, a, a man has with a woman and that he cannot have with his beloved prophet. I don't, I don't want to think about that uh, further. But... Uh, <laughs> Uh, so, so we are sitting here looking into into that, looking into how he harasses us and our loved ones, uh, makes threats, 
makes veiled sexual assault threats, says even more things. We haven't even looked into half of the stuff that he said on his Twitter page. I should tell you to, to go into, actually, you, you should you should open right now uh, Mohammed Hijab's Twitter page and look at some things that he has said. Or uh, I don't know if I can do that. I don't, I don't think uh, I can. A- actually, speak. actually, uh, yeah, I haven't I haven't uh, I haven't gone on his page since the warning to him the other day. But I do. Well, first of all, check this out. Uh, I got a comment here from Hexitas. Said each white dot on AP's shirt represents a hole in the standard narrative about the preservation <laughs> of the Quran. <laughs> this would be a perfect time to say it. there's more holes in the narrative than more hole, more hole, more holes than. Nah, see, those aren't really holes. Yeah, those, yeah. I can't say more holes than AP's shirt. Yeah, more holes than dots on AP's shirt. Yeah, so I, I did have these pulled up from the other day when we were discussing them. Um, so the, the, the point I was making is that he is attacking us, uh, harassing us, making uh, veiled sexual assault threats, dehumanizing people and all that stuff. And people are not being outraged. And he's also going there while yeah. Ali Dawa is uh, making this, uh, this, this this declaration that all um, ex-Muslims should be killed for causing corruption. And people are not outraged about yeah. that. But people lose it because yeah. you ate a page of the Quran. Yeah, I know. It's uh, it, it seems like they have different standards. Uh, which I, 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 which to be fair, I understand a Christian having higher standards for a Christian uh-huh. uh, than they would for a Muslim. But I mean, if you look at what's going on, I mean, he's starting this campaign of horrible abuse. You've got Ali Dawa calling for the death of apostates. The same, the same Ali Dawa who said that you know if his daughter was nine years old and got her first period, he'd tell her she's ready for marriage. Uh, uh-huh. The same Ali Dawa that pulled a chair out from under Hatun so she fell on the ground, and then when a an old man an old man came at him. He shoves the old man like he's about to hit this old this you know, this old guy. Um, these guys, these guys, just going around, just complete, just complete like thugs and cowards. And if you say, guys, I actually know how to stop some of that behavior. I can make them stop. I can force them to stop. Yeah. Ah! But you'll you'll end up hurting people's feelings. How could you ever do that? Where did that come from? You know, I was thinking about this the other day. I was thinking about the early church, right? The early church, the early Christians, they were nonviolent. You could torture them and kill them, and they wouldn't even they wouldn't even fight back. So they were nonviolent. They're they're turn the other cheek. And so I'm I'm thinking, well, well, what's the difference between them and Christians today? Because I look back at those guys, and I don't, there was nothing soft or weak about them and yet they weren't fighting they weren't violent but there was nothing soft or weak about them what is the difference between those guys back then and christian men today and the only difference i can really spot is that those guys weren't concerned about hurting people's feelings right they weren't Uh concerned they weren't concerned about being called names they weren't concerned about any of the stuff that that is used to control christians today that uh, they're so terrified they're so terrified of hurting someone's feelings or of being called in names or bigots or something like that. Um, and that's why, I mean, just tons of tons of Christians today. I'm, I'm saying Christians because Christians are the ones I'm primarily going to be dealing with here in the near future. But it's everyone, it's everyone across the board. I mean, let's face it. If dudes are walking among you, uh, raping raping your sisters and daughters, and you won't do anything about it because you're you're scared of being called names... You got some serious issues, and it's a lot. It's a lot worse than me taking a bite out of the Quran. Of course, I mean the the guy Mohammed Hijab that we are talking about mainly um, is somebody who has just recently, who has on his Twitter page also justified uh, physical violence against people who, um, who 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 defame, according to him, Islam. He he posted a video of uh, Tommy Robinson being uh, beaten by somebody for saying a few bad words about Islam, for example, and that was like applauded by um, over a thousand people on his Twitter page, by the way. And he was talking about how you know he was basically implying that that is how. Uh, Islamophobes should be should be dealt with. That uh, people who who insult Islam, that people who disrespect Islam, and disrespecting Islam doesn't mean you attack Islam. It doesn't mean you actively criticize Islam and you are harsh against Islam. It basically just means you exist and you express why you don't believe in this religion and you express why you have problems with this religion. That is actually what this is about. I I want people to understand this. Um, you are not an Islamophobe and an anti-Muslim, whatever it is, if you are like me or like David Wood here, uh, sitting and speaking out against Islam on a daily basis. You are simply an Islamophobe and an enemy of Islam if you just 
go out there and respond to Muslims who invite you to Islam by saying, I don't believe in Islam. I don't want to accept Islam. I don't believe in Islam because of this and this and this and this and this. If you count your reasons, then you are an enemy of Islam by default in mm -hmm. Islam. Yeah. And if and if that is the case, then that means you are supposed to be punished for that. You are supposed to be physically assaulted. You are supposed to be subjugated, may probably enslaved, fought. So that is, that is basically what this is about. And the reason why this is significant, why this is important, is that uh, people like Al Dawa that we want to talk about today, and like uh, Mohammed Hijab, uh, these people are currently only doing this on a very soft level. So the disgusting thing that that we have seen over the last few weeks is actually very soft in comparison to what these two individuals really want to achieve. Because what these two individuals and people like them want to achieve is to spread Islam to the country, to the UK, for example, and throughout the West. And Mohammed Hijab uh, said, said before, several weeks ago, that um, Islam will reach every household. It will, it will enter every household and people will come into Islam willingly. Uh, or otherwise, and um, I, I, he didn't say the last the, the last part verb, verbatim, but uh, that's basically what is being implied. And um, the, the 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 message here is that if it goes as these people want it to go, that people vastly in the West accept Islam, then an Islamic state must also be implemented according to the ideology of these uh, two people and everybody who supports them and who works with them. And if an Islamic state is implemented, this is not a conspiracy theory, by the way, this is something that these people openly say, that a Muslim majority, Muslim people are supposed to install an Islamic government and Islamic laws, Islamic rules, meaning the United Kingdom Kingdom, for example, would be an Islamic state in the future. And in this Islamic state, the killing of apostates like me would only be one of the very terrible things that would be taking place. Other than that, there would be uh, lynchings of Islamophobes, regular Islamophobes, there would be uh, the, the absolute oppression of women, the absolute revocation of, of basic human rights that we have today, the repression of other religions. You couldn't mm -hmm. be as Christians, for example, you couldn't go around and try to invite people to Christianity. That is not allowed. Dear Christians, that is not allowed in an Islamic state. A Christian is not allowed to go around and to do missionary work in an Islamic state. It is punishable by death, by war. It, it, it is still the case in many uh, Islamic countries today. You are not allowed to have uh, the same standards as Islam has with your uh, religious buildings and your religious symbols. So these are just, you know, the, the killing of apostates is only one thing that is there in this ideal Islamic state that Al Dawa and Muhammad Hijab advocate for. And they are advocating for it. They try to distance themselves from um, entities like the Islamic State or, or Al Qaeda. But um, eventually, essentially, they aim for an Islamic state, an Islamic body, an Islamic system that is quite similar under which you and I can not breathe and cannot freely live. That's what these people want to do. And this is not a conspiracy. These people say it openly. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you, you pointed out, you know, the situation that you're under a death sentence. I'm under a death sentence. Sam's under a death sentence. Probably yeah. a fair number of the viewers here are under death sentences for things they've said or for agreeing with us about various things. And yet, if we say we're opposed to the spread of Islam, <laughs> we're, we're opposed to something that, that, is, that admittedly is going to kill us, um, then we're bigots. But there's, there's, uh, there's one more thing, um, namely that part of the reason that you don't have full... Sharia penalties in uh, lots of Muslim countries is because of influence by non-Muslim countries, because of yeah. inf influence by the West. In other words, slavery was ended in Saudi Arabia um, due to pressure by the United States, right? JFK, mm -hmm. JFK made them end slavery, right? So a lot of the, a lot of Muslim countries understand that it's just embarrassing to them to to be implementing certain laws when the entire world is watching them and laughing at them, right? I mean, Saudi Arabia didn't decide one day, you know what, we need to let women drive. It was a constant source of embarrassment that women weren't allowed to drive. So a lot of the changes that have come about in Muslim countries over the years have come about because of non-Muslim countries pressuring them. 
if the pressure goes away because then those those non-Muslim countries become Muslim countries, guess what? All, everything everything gets gets worse for everyone. Even in, even in the Muslim countries, it doesn't get better. It gets massively, massively worse. And so it's just absolutely insane that when we say, guys, you really need to be careful about this ideology that you're dealing with here. Ah, you bigot, you racist, you Islamophobe. It's just funny <laughs> because it, it, it's insane because most Muslims in the West don't want to live under that. Um, there, there, there are virtually no... There are virtually no non-Muslims who would want to live under that. We don't want to live under that. So no one wants to live under that. And yet we just understand and admit that we don't want to live under that. And we're the bad guys because we're honest. Because we're yeah. honest and we say, there is no way. There is no way we want to live under that. Uh, let me check a couple questions real quick. Renee, I don't know why my picture quality is bad, by the way. I look horrible. I don't know, I don't know why. Because you've got a crap internet connection. Well, I have the best internet connection in the world. It ain't better than mine, son. <laughs> you got uh, a you got Verizon FiOS. It's 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 David Wood's fault. Um, I have perfect equipment, camera, and uh, internet connection. But apparently, uh, but obviously, David Wood has bad software, streaming software, which is why I, I I appear not as good as I would normally appear. So I'm very sorry, everybody. Hey, uh, the apostate prophet's about as uh, about as honest as Muhammad Hijab. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Uh, Renee asked, uh, is there an update on the apologetics empire? People were inquiring where to sign up and help. Yeah, I wanted to pull this message up real quick. Uh, I do need to post an update. It's ba basically the situation, Renee, is I know I'm dealing with some uh, some pretty nasty things right now. And I just don't want to be launching apologetics empires, empire videos, and simultaneously videos where I'm eating the Quran. So I kind of <laughs> have to mop up the situation with next see now you disappeared i'm trying to i'm trying to fix my oh, camera. okay okay good okay well you look clear now um <clears throat> so anyway yeah it's um it is kind of weird to say oh here's this video where we go through how to reach muslims with the gospel and then people who don't understand the context see right beside it a video of me eating the quran right yeah, because yeah. It, because here's the thing when when it's actually broken down to to people because most people just hear oh david wood flipped out and ate the quran it's like what what's <laughs> what's wrong with him right um when you actually break it down hey here's some horrible behavior there has to come a point in our history there has to come a point in our history where we say guys you're trying to escalate your attacks on women and you've been doing that for a long time. And no, no more. No more. If there's a way I can stop you, I'm going to stop you. Oh, wait, there is a way I can stop you. And it's right here in your Quran. And I can actually use this to, to stop what you're doing. And if you refuse, other Muslims around you are going to force you to do it. In other words, in other words, hijab can stomp his foot all he wants. Other Muslims will make him, will eventually make him. The question is, how far do we have to go? Um, once you break all of that down, Hey, this isn't me simply insulting the Quran. This is me making sure that it doesn't become popular in the Western Muslim community to be attacking people's wives and so on just because they disagree with them and so on. So once you understand that, you basically have people who say, yeah, we do need to take a stand on this. So yeah, maybe I wouldn't do it, but yep, go for it, David. And then you've got people who would say, well, no, I actually don't agree with you, but I at least get why you're doing it, so I'm not going to condemn you. And then you'll have people who say, nope, under no circumstances, even if even if they were murdering all women, you would not desecrate the Quran. And I just can't, I can't take people like that seriously. Um, so, yeah, once you once you once you break it all down, once you break it all down, if you disagree with me, then you disagree with me. But I I know that a lot of people aren't going to see that they're just going to hear eating the Quran and to have that simultaneously with uh, apologetics empire videos um, would be a little weird. So with that said, I don't think it's going to take long to make your job back down. I think uh, <laughs> probably this week I'll probably make one or two good videos explaining things, going through the objections so people understand what I'm doing. And then I'm going to show up on a live stream Hijab will have had full warning. I will have said this. This is why I want to make the videos explaining the reasoning so that Hijab has full warning. 
and then I'm going to show up here. I'm going to have a bottle of beer. I'm going to have a plate of bacon. I'm going to have a Quran. And I'm going to eat bacon, eat the Quran, swish it or s wash it down with some beer, and <laughs> constantly remind Hijab that the reason there are parts of the Quran, verses of the Quran, in a sea of beer and bacon in the belly of a man that he calls the most infamous Islamophobe in the world is because he will not delete a couple of tweets. And then the pressure is going to go on because, guys, that is not that's not like the punishment. That's like the next warning, right? Yeah. <laughs> there's a, there's the, the 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 end goal. Just because you know, people. I used to keep my plans and plots secret, and I've realized that you know, I might as well just say them because a lot of people, a lot of those guys, the hijab-minded guys, they can't control themselves. So you can blurt out. You can tell them exactly what they're going to do. They don't have the self-control. Uh, unless they're pressured to stop it, um, but the 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 goal here would not be for me to insult the Quran. The, the goal would be another. Not my goal. I don't want it to, to be clear. None of this is my goal. It's if you do this, then the goal will be this. Ultimately, to get you to stop what you're doing, hijab. But it will not be for me to sit around uh, insulting the Quran. It will be to normalize that. Why? Because hijab, I, I that's that. what that's what hijab wanted to do hijab wanted to normalize attacks on women so great if you want to do that then i will normalize desecration of the quran until you stop but here's the here's the thing that that these guys never get once you sort of cross those lines repeatedly it's you can't go back i mean i could go back but once once that's sort of become a thing that people do it's kind of hard to go back back when you had the you know the jylan's postings cartoons and stuff people weren't making cartoons of muhammad and so you could have a violent backlash and shut them down. Once they started like, you know, everybody draw Muhammad Day and stuff like that, it's too late. There are cartoons of Muhammad everywhere. Now we can put cartoons of Muhammad in our video thumbnails. No one's dying over it. It became normal. It became normal. Um, so that's, that's what I will do with desecrating the Quran. If Hijab does not simply delete some tweets and it's on him, it's I on him. I, I do that in my free time, by the way. I don't I don't just do it because I want uh, someone to back down or because I want to make a point. I just do it uh, for fun. In my free time, sometimes I uh, I eat the Quran. I put it into my soup and eat the Quran. I sometimes play fetch with my dog. I throw the Quran at my dog, uh, catches the Quran and brings it back. Do you? Sometimes I uh, I use it for different reasons. I don't know. I have I have I have many Qurans at home. I always have this Quran supply, these Qurans being shipped to me uh, because I always run out of them because I do all kinds of recreational and different things with them. Uh, yeah, that's that's what I do with my life. Yeah, now and, now and, that and, I'm and, a hateful ex-Muslim. And, and, and here's what's amazing. When, when I'm, you know, when I'm doing this stuff, I'm going to be, oh, David, this is how you go. This is not how I want to go. Guys, what, even, even when there was all the, you know, draw Muhammad cartoon things and stuff like that, did, did you see me participating in this? No, 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 I don't want to, I, I don't want to do that. I, I thought it was important that people were doing it, but other people were doing it. I didn't need, I didn't need to do it. So this is not the way I want to go. I like, I like a sort of equilibrium that we've reached where we criticize Muhammad and the Quran and they get to respond, right? They get to respond and they get to criticize our positions. That that's how it goes. When, when, when one side says, nope, we're going to do a massive escalation here and think that, <laughs> that they're going to get away with that. When they've got the apostate prophet, the Dizzle, Sam Shamoon, they got Dizzle. some people with some serious mental health issues. Whoa. By the way, I was I was going to release a video tonight. I was going to publish a video tonight. Um, it is about the whole mess. It is about the, the, the contrast between what uh, Mohammed Broomhead did and what uh, you and I and, and, and Abdullah Samir did on our last uh, live stream. I wanted to release that. It was very good. And at the beginning of that video, I also did something. I did my own part. I did something to the Quran. And guess what I did to the Quran? I wanted to I wanted to do something that was better than what David Wood did to the Quran. So I recorded the video and I started uh, doing things to the Quran. Uh -oh. And I will this is... I, uh, I will publish that video. You're starting to scare me. <laughs> and, and, and... <laughs> I... And, and and guys, ju just to uh, just to let you know how much I you know do not choose this path. I was in Ethiopia 
uh, I don't remember what year this was, 2013, 2014, I was in Ethiopia. And it was a conference of Christians, and it was Christian leaders in Africa, so like pastors, um, also like, you know, uh, police chiefs and judges and so on. But they weren't just from Ethiopia, they were from all, they were from all kinds of uh countries, uh, Sudan, uh, there were, there were a couple, couple people from Somalia and so on. So there were, uh, there were people from all over the place and they got together and there was, I won't mention his, I won't mention his name, but there was a Christian speaker. I've only met him once, but there was a Christian speaker and we were listening to, we were sitting in the back and we were listening to some of the most horrifying things. I mean, you, you can't find this stuff in horror films when people are sharing stories about the impact of Islam in their area. So uh, there would be people trying to force them to convert, force families to convert to Islam. Uh, one woman, um, they, the, the family wouldn't convert. So the husband had his throat cut and they force fed the woman the blood of her own husband um, ordering her to convert. And after that, she basically went insane. So she went in, she just, uh, I don't know, she went into some sort of insane frenzy until, uh, she died as well. But we're sitting back listening to story after story of that. And, uh, the, the, the guy I was sitting with w whenever they would tell one of these stories, he would, he had his Quran there that he was teaching with, and he would take the Quran and he would, he would just toss it on the floor. He wasn't trying to draw attention to himself. We we're in the back, but he would toss the Quran on the floor and he would use it as a foot rest. And even even in spite of all of that, I was thinking, well, you know, come on, you don't want to set a bad example by propping your feet on the Quran when we're hearing these these disgusting stories about the the impact of Islam. Well, we've reached a point where, all right, here's a line, here's a line. I'm ready to die. I'm ready to die at this line. Ready yeah. to die on this hill. You're not go. You're not going there. So take your tweets down. Otherwise, <laughs> gotta be messed up. Absolutely, absolutely. I wanted to publish. I wanted to publish my video tonight, but I didn't publish it uh, because I was aware that we're going to have this live stream, and I, th I thought if I publish a video, then uh, everybody will be watching my video. No one will come here to watch David Wood's, uh, you know, live stream because obviously, if I publish something and David Wood publishes something, then people will obviously prefer uh, my channel and watch that. No one cares yeah. about what David Wood does. This, uh, uh, so, hey, th th this video is titled Ali Dawa's Sharia Execution Fantasies. It should be called uh, The Apostate Prophet's YouTube Fantasies. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> Good point. No, yeah, yeah, so. uh, you, you know, though, if we if we because I was making a video along the same lines, basically saying that Muhammad Hijab is an apostate because he's a uh -huh. you 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 can't insult something as sacred as this when his prophet is smashing people's idols. Uh -huh. That was part of his definition of himself. What are you saying? I'm sent to smash the idols. What? <laughs> Wait, you're smashing <laughs> idols. And then what, what What am I supposed to do with this crowd? Oh, oh, you better respect it. Hypocrisy, hypocrisy. Uh, but uh, maybe, maybe, maybe we can arrange it to where we release them around the same time and then we can link them to each other. Something like we could, that. We could do it. We could do it. We, we could, could do, do that. 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 Some people are asking me in the, in the live chat if I'm going to debate, um, if I'm going to debate inspiring philosophy uh i haven't shared that publicly i don't know who who did <laughs> but yeah we were we were currently in the uh we were currently having talks we are currently having talks um to possibly sit down and have a live discussion it would be more of a discussion than a debate than a formal debate but um so basically about uh about god about whether god exists or not hey, you need to be careful uh, with that dude I know, I know. That dude has a weird mind. I think he's got some like autistic savant abilities or something like that. But that's a uh, that dude, <laughs> that dude, <laughs> that dude. Uh, he borders Sam Shamoon and Anthony Rogers in his ability to uh, to uh, absorb information. My 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 mind's like a you know like this cup, right? It's full of water. You could pour some more in, but some's gonna spill out, right? Whereas there's they just keep absorbing more and more information but uh it will be yeah. it would be interesting and it's cool to have these kind of crossovers and it's cool to have discussions for examples to people like muhammad hijab hey this is how the rest of the world does it this is yeah, how the rest yeah. of the world just gets together and no one has to freak out uh well, yeah. one, one more comment to uh renee here so uh renee um i have a couple of admins for the uh website um, I don't know if you're busy, but basically I'm looking for people that I've seen a lot over the years. 
um, looking for admins. So it'll be, you know, people are going to be sending in their stuff. And so it's basically keeping track of people um, because I want to focus on the content of, you know, the videos and so on. So I don't want to have to be doing the, the technical stuff because that's all the stuff that I suck at. I've always been horrible at, at uh, websites, anything like that. So if you, so we, the idea is if we have like four or five admins, then it, it's not a lot of work. Basically checking the, uh, checking the messages, uh, seeing if anyone needs uh, any heads up or something. But also when people are sending their, their videos in, you know, making sure that everything's in the right place and so on. So uh, if you want to do that, let me know. Uh, so we're looking for a few admins. And guys, if I don't know you, do not message me and say, I'd like to be an admin. No, I do not trust almost anybody with this stuff because there's, there's all kinds of personal. So if I haven't seen you for the past few years, then uh, you may be the most, you may be the best person in the world. And never mind. If, if you think you'd be a good admin and you're good with websites and stuff, you can go ahead and send me a, a message and we'll, we'll see what happens. I will be a good admin, but I don't want to be. So yeah, that, yeah. I, well, I, I, yeah, I would be a terrible admin. I just know I'd suck at it, so yeah, I definitely yeah, don't yeah. want to be. Uh, and 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 Paul Dog here says, uh, "What's Sam's response to Mimi's counter offer? The people want to know. Um, there is no, there, there's. We said it. We said there's no counter offers. It was a completely reasonable offer. He wants a stupid fight that we don't want. We want three debates. Uh, if you're talking about a fight, Sam's actually going to have to." hit the gym and be going through physical training and so on because he's going to take it he's going to take it seriously so hey job all you have to do is three debates you don't have to travel we're going to do it right we're going to do it right here on my channel so no counter offers yes or no think think about this seriously think about this this um what is happening here muhammad hijab has a problem with uh sam shimoon with what sam shimoon says about islam and with uh sam shimoon's position as a christian against islam well, fight you. with his criticism of islam but what but what he wants to do is to have a physical fight with sam shimoon he wants to beat sam shimoon up so mm -hmm. the, the 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 big muslim apologist here the big Muslim apologists that that Muslim uh, that young Muslim people currently like so much finds the appropriate response in beating up somebody who criticizes Islam, who has an issue with Islam. That's what he wants to do. He even made the same implications to me that uh, that I would neither win a uh, a verbal nor a physical debate against him. And I was like, what, what are you talking about, man? Like, I'm, I'm not going to fight you. Are you stupid? <laughs> but that's that's how he wants to defend Islam, through physically fighting and beating people up. Yeah. As if that's... <laughs> and, you're making our point. And he, yeah, and, and so he's making us... He's making a point about, you know, what his ideology does to the human yeah, mind. Yeah, but what's yeah. amazing is he could do the three debates. Sam will obliterate him in those debates. And then... I'm like 98% sure Sam would just knock this dude out in like two punches. Um, I know a little bit too much about Sam from his never seen him. Well, I have seen him. Sam can kick you right in the head. You don't think it. You think you, th you think, hey, look at this. You look at this slow doofus right here. Sam can Sam can kick your can kick your head right off. Uh, no idea why he's you know in just in like that, but uh, but he is. So anyway, but it, but just imagine. Sam could crush Hijab in three debates and then just imagine a world where Hijab knocks Sam out. Then Hijab's followers would just, ha ha, I'm, our guy strong, Hijab yeah. strong, yeah. your guy weak, ha ha, disprove Islam are true. And that's how they would be. <laughs> and so that, that's why I'm not entirely opposed to it, you know, because it is, you know, MMA again is a sport. So as long as it's treated as a sporting event, not like a street brawl. Yeah, don't want to see it, but if that's what it'll take to get this guy uh, to debate these issues, then, you know, so be it. But, um, yeah. All the, they want the, to do is, is show that Allah helped Muhammad Hijab beat up Sam Shimoon, yeah. the enemy of Islam. That's, that's, the, what they that's, want that's the goal, right? That's the goal. <laughs> yeah. Ha, this proved you wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I, I've seen several people say Hijab and Ali, Ali Dawa ran away from Hatun. I'm guessing that there's been video posted today that I didn't see of, uh, of them running away, which is amazing because she posted a video yesterday. Um, she posted a video yesterday where apparently like British agents or something 
came to her and said, it's too dangerous. You need to stay away from Speaker's Corner. And then what happens? She goes to Speaker's Corner and they run away from her. <laughs> so think about this, right? You got guys going to the British government. Will you, will you protect us from Hatun? She keeps exposing our claims. Will you tell her not to come? Or we'll hurt her. And then she goes anyway. And then, oh, Hatun is here. <laughs> this is this is this big, tough religion that's going to heap abuse on, on women because we strong. Oh, we strong. Oh, no. There's like 80 of us here. And we're terrified. Uh, there's like 80 of us here. There's like 20 full-time apologists out there. And, oh, we're scared because Hatun is coming. Oh, this t man. We are, are we learning about this ideology, ladies and gentlemen? Are we Are we learning something? You're finished, boy. I'm your <clears throat> teacher, boy. And then he run. Then they run away. Amazing, amazing, brilliantly amazing. Someone is uh, saying, by the way, that we should be having a debate. The issue is um, that you and I should have a debate. I think that's what that's we, what are. The, we are. The we issue are. We are. We are. And again, I, I, that... I, I challenged David Wood f uh, to a debate, but unfortunately, David Wood is uh, too scared of the outcome of a debate between him and me, which is why he's uh, trying to just run from the debate and I'm, I'm almost scared that he will start telling me to to commit suicide like <laughs> like Mohammed Tijar, but I, I know that David would you need to, you need to kill yourself before the debate you need to slaughter yourself jump out the before window the <laughs> <laughs> golden showers Ooh, I'm the champion of Christianity talking about golden showers that's how we roll in Christianity you need to well, visit my live stream sometime. You need to visit a live stream of me and start talking about the gimp, gimp golden shower. I, I don't want to give, give away these these terms. What people a probably don't know about it. I don't want to. I don't want to inform people about this stuff. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's it, it's it's here's here's what sucks. Can you imagine someone who's who has no idea what we're talking about? They're like, oh, let me check out this awesome discussion between this Christian and this atheist. Where <laughs> you know, golden showers? What? Whoa! My goodness! What is this? What is this horrible myth? Oh yeah. You know, um, people come to a Christian channel and hear about golden shower. <laughs> uh, Al Masihi said, "So, how many Christians complain, David? Um, I mean, lots of people. I mean, mo most people who normally follow my stuff weren't complaining, but yeah, I did get. I mean, you could go through the comment section; you'll see lots of Christians who were complaining. Uh, James White complained. I heard Pulpit and Pen that uh, Attack Dog Ministry." Um, made something i haven't i haven't uh i haven't checked this stuff out but uh i might just to make some points and all right hey let, let, let's just let's just recap let's go back wait, to wait, 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 wait what were we saying about uh you were saying something before i messed it up oh yeah the debate um we are going to have a debate we just yes. um we need to arrange that but it's we will have a debate about yeah. uh and i've i've pointed out before that the delays are entirely on me it's basically at, at, at any given time i've got between three and five projects that i'm trying to get organized and it's i need to finish one or two of them in order to to start a new one so you know right now I'm trying to get the apologetics empire rolling and things like that and trying to knock out a couple of these video series and and things and then i've got this whole hijab situation and a few things going on behind the scenes as far as I'm training some some people on using YouTube and and using mm -hmm. apologetics on YouTube and so on and so it's kind of a it's kind of yeah I could jump right into it and just make a video off the top of my head but it would kind of suck and the idea was uh -huh. we wanted like our best stuff and to do it carefully like do it like like we would normally do a video like put a lot of thought and get everything exactly right versus you know an off the cuff debate where you're you know arguing and stuff like that and then yeah. you know you're always you you afterwards you say gosh I wish I'd said this or gosh I wish I'd said that whereas you know we want it we're going to stretch it out. We're going to stretch it out so that everything is exactly the way we want it. But yeah, uh, yeah. As far as far as this, I as long as I get this hijab thing out of the way, and then I've got I've got the material ready for probably 10, 10, um, 10 videos of the apologetics empire. So. If I can get the hijab thing out of the way and then jump back into the apologetics empire, record like four or five of those ahead of time, then there's a there's some leeway to to say, hey, AP, uh, let's go ahead and start. But yeah, no, I, ju I just always get a, get a pleasure out of um, a kick, maybe a dopamine hit out of 
it when you say that the delay is because of you because normally i'm just i'm the the most disorganized person in the world so uh it's it's really surprising actually that the delay is not because of me but that rather shows you David. What, that I want shows to you how, that yeah that's how, yeah. that shows you how disorganized i am um, <laughs> no it's just, the, the real problem is like I massively underestimate how long it will take me to do things. Um, yeah, me and too, so me no too. matter what is this, yeah, I can do that too. And oh yeah, I can do that. No, oh, okay, I can do that. And hey, why am I sleeping three hours a night trying to get all, you know, trying to just keep up with all this stuff that uh, that I signed on to. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's recap. What were, what were we I wanted to, I wanted to recap this Muhammad Hijab tweet about your wife. Oh yeah. So uh, kind of two things. And again, ladies and gentlemen, we've read these a couple more a couple of times already. Um, but there's this one and one more where he tries to you know popularize this with his fans. He has a ton more tweets, a ton more tweets. I didn't even read most of them carefully. I just kind of skimmed. And this is one where this this is the one that convinced me to take a bite out of the Quran. Right, because this is another one where I didn't I wasn't reading it very carefully, wasn't paying attention to what he was saying here. And AP pointed out what he's actually saying. So notice, he says, when these anti... No, so notice, this is a response to Mrs. Apostate. So there's a pic there with a message from Mrs. Apostate. And it, this is brilliant by Hijab how he does this, because he's using all language of rape and torture, which would get him banned if he was if he were saying, we're going to you know rape and torture you. But he'll... he'll Put words in there to show he doesn't mean it literally, but he wants the imagery in there anyway. And so he's safe. So notice, when these anti-Muslim attention whore Islamophobes need to get on their knees in intellectual submission before they are whipped by freedom of speech by the Twitter Muslims, and they reluctantly open their mouth in protestation to find they have been defiled by the truth. So notice... Notice everything he says right there. Whore, get on their knees in submission, going to be whipped by Muslims, and you're going to open your mouth and be defiled. And, well, then he, just... and, then he just, and then he just adds all of the words, oh, defiled by the truth, open your mouth in protestation, whipped by freedom of speech. He adds all the words to make it basically okay to... To be on Twitter. Let, let me read this without his uh, little additions that try to make this appropriate. Let me read this without that. When these anti Muslim whores need to get on their knees in submission before they are whipped by Muslims and they reluctantly open their mouth in protestation to find that they have been defiled. That is how this is supposed to be read. But he adds these additional words to make it look like uh, he's actually just talking about, you know, uh, freedom of speech and mm -hmm. uh, anti-Muslim, uh, you know, uh, uh, rhetoric and responses by freedom of speech, loving Muslims. What he's talking about is actually a, a sexual violation uh, of, of, of people who are against Islam. And in this case, he's speaking of my wife and he's only targeting my wife because she is my wife, because he has a problem with me, not because she happens to be somebody who said something about Islam, because there are tons of those people around. Mm -hmm. And then, so you had that, and then the... Uh the one on top. And, and, and this this stuff, there there has been no response to this. Like More than 400 people have liked this so far. More than 400 uh, of his Muslim followers have liked that so far. No one has come out and condemned it, although many people who liked it understood what he meant and started uh, having these, started, whoa, 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 I see what you did there, you know. And people did that, but then people are protesting uh, David Wood reading the, uh, eating the Quran. So mm -hmm. <laughs> let's go. Yeah, and then, uh, so the one at the top there, I call upon all of the Muslim Twitter soldiers to work within the full scope of the law. So basically just what Mo what Muhammad Hijab did there. In other words, he took his rape and torture imagery, um, but, uh, you know, made it legal to work within the full scope of the law to create maximum damage to the cause of the apostate prophet and his wife. They are demoralized and on the ropes. Do not let the weak minded Muslims deter you. Finish them. And so in, in the context here, it's, hey, I've set you an example of, of how to do this, of how to heap this kind of abuse 
on people's wives. And now I'm calling on the Muslim Twitter soldiers to go out and do the same. And so he's he's, he's trying to start a, a movement here on the Internet. And <laughs> once again, this is just amazing, right? This is this guy's trying to this guy's popular and he's been getting more popular over the past couple of years. And he's one of the most popular people, uh, one of the most popular Muslim apologists. Um, online, and he's partners with another Muslim, Ali Dawa, who's also one of the most popular Muslim YouTubers. And <clears throat> here they are. You've got a pop, you've got Ali Dawa running around saying, you know, apostates are going to be killed, and you've got uh, Muhammad Hijab saying, this is how we're going to do things. We're going to we need to really crack down on women and start heaping more and more uh, sexually explicit abuse. We need to start heaping this on them. This is going to be the new way. And if you got a problem with it, there's only one thing you can do. You can degrade our religion so much you force us to stop, according to Surah 6, verse 108 of the Quran. But we know you're not going to do that because you, we... <laughs> I want to say, what they say is we're cowards, right? Those are the messages Those are the messages I get. I can actually, I can actually pull some up and read some if I want. But they, they, they say... You guys can't stand against us because you're cowards. That's their that's their view, right? You guys will not stand up. You guys have all of these all of these rights that you believe in, freedom of speech and this and that. But when we put the pressure on you, you always back down. You're cowards, <laughs> right? And so when so, but when when one of us says nope, we're not going to back down. We're going to stand our ground. Then it's everyone's <laughs> everyone stabs us in the back. How dare you? How dare you? You brute! You evil yeah. brute! It's funny. Um, so, dear Mohammed Tajab and people uh, like him and people who follow him who think that uh, that you can just uh, that you can trust your 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 your, your mob culture and your attacks and I, I don't I don't care about your muscle power. I don't care about your manliness, about your manhood and uh, and all that stuff. Um, I'm in America. Mm -hmm. I have the means to, to defend myself. Uh, so I just I just want to put that out there. I, I really I really couldn't care less about your, your your muscle power guys, people who think that they can that they could uh, uh, try to try to you know harass me or threaten me or anything. I should be aware of that. We have uh, more rights here in America that uh, people like that should be aware of. By the way, David, I sent you um, three screenshots on Skype. Uh, why do people send me stuff on Skype when I do not know how to use it? Let me see. I'm gonna try and, cl <laughs> I'm gonna try and click on some of this stuff and hope that it doesn't delete the call. Nope, that just put me back to. Oh wait, I see a chat button down here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because we are talking about we are only talking about uh, me and apostates and all that stuff, but uh, there is more to that. I mean, people like to relate to what is going on here, right? And the average person, the average non-Muslim disbeliever or Islamophobe or whatever it is, which would be uh, which would be applied to everybody who's probably, most people who are probably watching this stream, stream right now, uh, these people would also like to see how uh, Muhammad Tijab's speech and the speech of other people affects them. And here I have sent you some screenshots in which uh, Mohammed Tijab said certain things that not only affect me and apostates, but also you and everybody out there. Do you? So you want me to pull these up, right? Probably, yeah. All yeah. right, it's going to take a little while. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. I, if I could share my screen, I could have just shared it right now, but I don't think I can do that from here. Yeah, you can. Oh, here we go. All right. So now I just have to go over here and then import them into the system. Thank you for making this as difficult as possible all right you I, can get, I got one up that's a, that's a record for me of speed so muhammad hijab this is the one i believe certain anti-muslim women would wish they lived in the medieval period a period where if a war was won by the opposing side it was conventional that people sh could be taken as booty some historical accounts actually say some women would dress up for the captor now are you aware of what is being said here? oh i'm aware of this 
Mohammed Hijab is tweeting this as a response in in the middle of his frenzy because he's uh, angry at um, anti-Muslim women or anti-Islamic women, women who don't like Islam and who speak out against Islam. He's mentioning people's uh, wives and women themselves. And in the middle of all of it, he, he makes this tweet and says, I believe certain anti-Muslim women would wish they lived in the medieval period, a period where if a war was won by the opposing side, it was conventional that people could be taken as booty. What he's implying here is that he and his fellow um, Muslim warriors, Twitter warriors, as he put it earlier, are at a war with us. Uh, anti-Islamic people and what he actually thinks is that the women on our side maybe just want to uh, be captured by those brave Muslim men including him and be uh, sexually subjugated and used by the Muslims this would include every single uh, anti-Islamic woman here who is uh, maybe here in this in this chat who is currently watching this and who publicly posts about things. So he is basically saying that he would like to, that he has some interest or that these women have some interest in being captured and sexually violated by him and his fellow warriors. Now, now, now notice the, the mindset, right? It's uh, the mindset is deep down. You, you want, you want one of us, right? Yeah. yeah. You, 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 uh, you Western women, you want one of us to come and defile you. It's yeah. amazing, and yeah. and keep keep in mind this is this is now. I mean, he's he 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 lost his spot with Iera, presumably because of uh, his antics, but he's uh, he's with another organization right now. He said he's going to adhere to their code of conduct, but apparently, apparently they do not see a problem with him saying, you know, I think these um, anti-Muslim women, deep down, they want us showing up and raping them. Yeah. And yet, if we say there's a there's any problem, if there's any problem with Islam's view of women, we're we're the bigots. We're just being Islamophobic here. We're just completely misunderstanding what is being said. We're just Islamophobes. <laughs> yep. Do you have the other ones? Um, yeah, I saved it. Then it didn't pop up. Trying to figure out why. Yeah. Mm. So it, he basically went on on many rants along these lines. But uh, as David is trying to set this up, and maybe he will find a way uh, to save the day. He, I, I didn't even send you other ones. Okay. In, in some of these, he even said something like um, he said how he said that he posted a Quran verse, which which was about how Allah causes Allah places uh, terror in the hearts of the enemies of Islam. And he was here talking about how um, he said in one of these, some enemies of Islam who I have been intellectually bullying think I care about them and how they feel. I believe they are a category of people that should only know one side of me, the mighty side. Mm -hmm. As for those who come with calm energy and humble spirit, we, re we reciprocate. But uh, And then he posted a, a, a Quran verse, which was about how Allah causes fear in the hearts of the, of the non-Muslims, of the enemies of Islam. Mm -hmm. And... Um, that this is basically what his struggle is about, to terrorize the non-Muslims and the disbelievers, the enemies of Islam. I have the uh, the cattle one on the screen. Oh, they're yeah. Like, you, um, they're like cattle. They are like cattle. And there is, and you, and you see, there's cattle on the on the picture. Uh, this is in reference that to is a def Quran That is verse. definitely, that is definitely cattle. Yeah. And this is in reference to several Quran verses, several parts in the Quran, which in which the Quran describes those who reject Islam, who reject the message as cattle. If you know the numbers of one of those, David, go ahead. But um, I, I, could, I would just I, I could just look it up. Uh, they are like cattle, rather they are more astray. That's a, that's approximately how it usually goes in the Quran. That is mentioned uh, several times, I believe at least three times in the Quran, uh, including in chapter 7, verse 179, where it says, uh, they have hearts with which they do not understand, eyes with which they do not see, and they have hearts with which they do not, uh, ears with which they do not e uh, hear. Those are like livestock, rather they are more astray. It is they who are the healers. In several other parts in the Quran, it refers to the disbelievers and those who reject Islam as just they are cattle, 
rather they are more astray, meaning they are actually worse than cattle. And this is what he posted in the middle of everything too, without of course making, f saying it fully, because if he posted the full context, it would get him in trouble, which is why he only posted, they are like cattle. And, uh, He's dehumanizing every single one of us here. Sea, sea, eagle, sea eagle bird says, uh, do cows eat Qurans? Um, <laughs> sea eagle bird? We may actually need to find out. That will come down to Muhammad Hijab. That will be his choice on whether <laughs> we find that out. But, yes, if he does not take down certain tweets, we're going to find out whether all kinds of animals, either, either you know, if you just give it to them, like there are animals that will just eat it, like a goat, uh, and other animals, you might have to mix it in with some stuff. But we are yeah. going to find out. This will, again, all be on Hijab. So let's see what we have it's here. Fault. Let me it's see if I can fault. move this over here. All right. So now you're on the screen here. But uh, so Muhammad Hijab says, listen, apostates. That means you, AP. You can continue playing the victim as if someone cares. <laughs> How dare you play the victim when we're heaping abuse on you, starting campaigns of threats and intimidation against your wives. And we've agreed that we're going to kill you uh, once our numbers get big enough. But stop playing the victims. When wh What's hilarious is these are the guys who complain about being victims more than anyone else on the planet. Right? Yes, that's what, I'm, that's what I say all the time. <laughs> all right, let's see. Go back to following our every move like the fanboys you are. And we will confront your slave masters whilst you spectate. I know you are burning inside. Die in your rage, said the most rage-filled person in the world. <laughs> and then uh, a response came, what slave masters? And he said, liberal white man. <laughs> liberal white man. <laughs> by, by liberal, he means basically every white man that is currently living in, uh, in this liberal Western system. So liberal refers to a liberal democracy not to uh, liberal politics or liberal parties. Mm -hmm. So what he, he basically means the, the white people. The yeah, white so, um, I mean, if you're talking white, I mean, he does serve the whitest prophet of all time, a guy who bought, owned, sold, and traded black African slaves. And, and, so. he's, and, he, and he's, basically, he's basically implying that we apostates, uh, those who have left Islam, are slaves that we are uh, that we enslave ourselves which that he said that before al dawa also said something along those lines before we are being enslaved by white people in the west we are uh, accepting this slave status slave position and he and his fellow uh, muslims and muslim apologists and muslim warriors will be here uh, confronting our slave masters which are the white men as we watch and burn inside and die in our rage which is i mean just just look at the sentiments that are going on here that are being held here can you imagine people talking like this can you imagine people of other religions of other ideologies talking like this people would be outraged to see stuff like this being said publicly mm -hmm. but here we have these uh these prominent voices these prominent ap apologists of Muslims who say, who call us slaves and who say that they will confront you white people basically fight and confront you white people who are our slave masters while also implying that he would that, that he thinks your your wives and your women would like to be captured and raped by them that you are all less than cattle worst of creatures and that he would also like to see our wives in submission being sexually violated by his Twitter soldiers by his Muslim Twitter soldiers. This is the sentiment that we are dealing with. Mm -hmm. um, I'm looking. Uh, lots of people keep pointing out in the in the chat that uh, that they ran from Hatun, and so I'm searching for videos about Speaker's Corner today. And Soko Films uh, has a video: Muslims refusing to defend the Quran, uh, and it, it, Hatun is right there in front of Muhammad Hijab and Ali Dawa. So. Everyone be sure to check that out um, after we're done here. Soko Films, Muslims Refusing to Defend the Quran, Hatun, Speaker's Corner. We'll check that out. Matter of fact, maybe uh, we can start tossing in the link uh, at the end. Um, all right. All right. Did we want to uh, 
we were supposed to talk about the Ali Dawa. We've been talking more about hijab since he's been throwing the most tantrums over the past couple days. Did we want yeah. to check out uh, check out the f- infamous clip of Ali Dawa? Oh, do you have that ready? Do you want to play that? Or? Yep, yep. Yeah, we can watch it. Oh, okay. Well, I'm easy like Sunday morning, man. Whoa. All right, Ooh. let's check this out. Woo. <clears throat> Ali Dawa. This isn't part of our religion. There's a reason to it, yeah? There's a reason why there's a capital punishment. Because people like you, little weaklings, who leave their religion and cause uh, corruption in the land by spreading it, the capital punishment in Islamic law would be applied to you. We have no doubt. And we're proud of that, yeah? Capital punishment will be applied in an Islamic state, yeah? Not individuals going and doing it themselves like uh, idiots, yeah? No, under an emir... It is done, yes, and we, you know what, we'll be watching. We'll be watching. Because if you're going to cause corruption in the land, that's going to cause more uh, damage to the society as a whole. Because the Sharia didn't come to protect an individual's right. Hey, can I drink alcohol? Yeah, sure. Drink alcohol, uh, run someone over, kill them, set the, uh, uh, all this kind of chaos. No, Islam says the right of the community is greater than you individual wanting your right to freedom, which is BS. Absolutely BS, yeah? Don't get me started. So it just backfired on you. It's interesting to see this idiot's view of what a rights... We don't believe that you have your right to drink alcohol and drive and kill somebody. I don't know, I don't know anyone who thinks that, that you have that right. That, that's what he cites as, as, yeah. as reason, as, as, as an example. That's, that's not very bright. Yeah. You see, Islam's better. We, Islam is better. Islam is better. You, we don't have that. Yeah? Yeah? We don't have that. We don't have that. that you, you, you think you have the right to go around driving, mowing down kids in your vehicles like you're some sort of uh, jihadi going out with vehicular jihad? We don't, we don't do that. We don't have that right. We are proud of that. We're the, proud of that. These guys produce the only people in the world who deliberately go and mow down people with cars. I know the irony. Yeah, the yeah, irony. It's, it's amazing. So it's amazing. ridiculous. That's what he comes up with, the irony. <clears throat> <laughs> this is this is this is a comment because I, I I made a quick video about Ali Dawa's comments there, um, and uh, this is from a Muslim Islam Saiful. He says, as a Muslim, I want capital punishment for apostasy. By un- I guess I just have to read it with the mistakes. As a Muslim, I want capital. P- this could be Ali Dawa, given his level of grammar and spelling. <laughs> <laughs> It says, uh, as a Muslim, I want capital punishment for apostasy by, under, a emir, ruler of the land. Majority of Christian are no longer men anymore. They became soft, cold, when there are God, Jesus, called a gay man, or bastard, or his mother done adultery. Christian do nothing. They just put lipstick on their lips and sit down at home like girls. And we are Muslims. We don't tolerate any apostasy on Prophet Muhammad or Jesus or Moses. So the, the, the point he's making here is, hey, what this is a sign is of our strength. Yes, we'll kill you for apostasy. We will do that. Unlike you people who are totally weak and people can do whatever whatever they want to insult Jesus or insult Mary, and you do nothing except put on lipstick and sit down at home like girls. And what <laughs> what and, and what, what's amazing is they're they're saying this right. They're saying this is how you guys are. In other words, he's saying we only respect strength, and you guys are weak. And when I say, hey, I'm actually going to so, show some strength here. I'm not backing off this to the death. I'm not backing off this. And then Christians, no, David, you need to back. You need to not just keep your mouth closed. That's the way to win their hearts. That's the way to win their hearts, man. You just show them how weak and timid you are, and that'll impress them, and then their hearts will melt. And they'll convert, man. They'll convert. I've never seen it work. Never seen it work. But in my mind, I think, man, that's the way to reach Muslims. James White, man. I really want to see that Christian man who sits at home and puts lipstick on and uh, sits there like a girl. <laughs> <laughs> it, like, it doesn't work. It doesn't like cattle, work. man. <laughs> it, <laughs> it doesn't work to approach uh, to approach these people that way. If you go to these people and and, and you and you start talking about how how 
how you just want to be peaceful to them or you just want to make them understand this and understand that you will get the same response from these people. You will get the same response that you are a bunch of weaklings, that you have lost your faith, that you are uh, idol worshippers, that you are this and that and you are godless and you should uh, you, you cause corruption in society, you cause corruption in the world. That's the response that you will get. These people are, not, are missing the plot. They're mm -hmm. missing the point. Ali Dawa here is saying that in an ideal Islamic state, I should be put to death because I cause corruption in society and it shouldn't be done by some random people, uh, you know, running around and killing people because those people are idiots. And he needs mm -hmm. to emphasize that so he doesn't get in trouble because uh, he would otherwise be, uh, be be categorized as a as a terrorist or a terrorist advocate. Uh, although he is, by definition right now with the video that he has put out, an extremist in the UK and uh, he should have known that before he put out that video, he's in trouble now. Uh, the issue is that... They'll let, they'll let him slide. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I would say so. But I, I will, I will, I will, I will push. But the issue that uh, is happening here is that Adawa is, is saying that he would have me. But he's speaking about me here in this case. This was a response to me. He's speaking about me and people like me who mm -hmm. cause corruption in society. That he would have them executed under an Islamic state, under an Islamic ruler, and the Muslims like him, they would proudly and happily watch as this is happening because I deserve my 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 my, my punishment, uh, my just punishment, which is uh, death. But what he's talking about here is that. He's not talking about a hypothetical situation, a, 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 a dream world where his Islamic rule applies. No, he's talking about an actual uh, time that he wants to see in the future. He wants to see an Islamic state in the future, in the UK, in, in the world where such laws are applied. He's really not talking about some fantasy. He's talking about what he actually wants. And in that state that he actually wants, that he not only wants in the UK, but also wants in the US and in every Western country out there, he would be killing everybody who leaves Islam like me. And he would also be uh, silencing every single one of you and punishing everybody who speaks out against Islam. That is what they teach. And one more thing to add. I had a I had a recent discussion with a guy called Daniel Hikikichu, who is a Muslim apologist, who in his discussion with me talked about how he wants to bring slavery back because slavery belongs back into society because it is good for society. And this, the inflow of slavery would be by the Islamic empire, which he wants to see happen, declaring war against non-Muslims and collecting their opponents as slaves. He wants that happen. He wants to uh, impose Islam on to the entire world and he wants to kill apostates and wants to push back against every religion out there because he believes that is justice. That guy was applauded for that by Al Dawa and also invited and applauded by Mohammed Hijab the dear guy that we are talking about here who told him that he was absolutely fantastic, that he absolutely destroyed me. So Ali Dawa, uh, Mohammed Hijab and Daniel Hikikachu uh, agree very much on imposing Islam onto the world and imposing Islam onto every individual in society who doesn't want to participate in Islam once they have managed to establish a majority and once they have established, uh, managed to establish Islam as an as, as a government entity. This is what these people want. I'm uh, laughing at a comment by Mrs. Apostate. <laughs> what is it? Uh, David, all you need to do is a Care Bear stare to win the hearts of the Muslims. <laughs> what are you laughing? Do you even know what a Care Bear stare is? I, of course I know. Of course I know. You're not the only old, old person here. Did they have the Care Bears in Germany? Yes, they did. Oh, well, wow. interesting. It was, it was called Glücksbeerhies. <laughs> <laughs> ja, <Yeah>. ich liebe dich. <laughs> Fantastic. Wow. Yeah. I thought I thought they I thought they I don't know. We, you know, I thought they'd be a little more sinister because when you read, you know, like uh uh gosh, what's it called? With the with the with the scissors. It's a kid's. It's a kid's story with a guy with the fingernails and he chops off the fingers and so on. Is it? Is it Struvelpater? Struvel Pater? Does that sound Did familiar? You, Do you guys no. know this? This no this so-called German. Hold on, Struvelpater. 
It's like because you had the Brothers Grimm, right? And then you had the American, uh-huh. you have the American versions of the stories, and they're all watered down and soft, whereas they're much more violent and bloody uh-huh. in the German editions. Oh, Struve, no, I don't, I don't, I don't actually know about that very much. Uh, yeah, Heinrich Hoffmann. Okay, Struvelpater. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, I remember we had to read that in, in German class. A night in eighteen forty five German's children German children's book by Heinrich Hoffmann. It comprises ten illustrated and rhyme stories, mostly about children. Each has a clear moral that demonstrates the disastrous consequences of misbehavior in an exaggerated way. Um, and yeah, but yeah, they're like chopping. I, I think that I, yeah yeah they're they're chopping off body parts and all kinds of messed up stuff in there. But it's, it's for it's for kids. So anyway, I fig- I just figured that that you know if you guys had Care Bears, it would be like way more graphically violent it's funny i was just talking i was just here talking with uh so much energy and and enthusiasm and anger and motivation to everybody about the islamic system that the that the that the british dawa boys would like to see in the future and now we're talking about care bears and children's books (laughs) oh here here's here's the here's the one i was remembering so um he's not even listening (laughs) <laughs> I was just reading the, the stories. <laughs> in Die Geschichte vom Daumenlutscher, Lutscher, oh. Thumbsucker. Yeah, there you go. Thumbsucker, yeah, yeah. A mother warns her son Conrad not to suck his thumbs. <laughs> However, when she goes out of the house, he resumes his thumb sucking until a roving tailor appears and cuts off his thumbs with giant scissors. <laughs> oh, Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. Get, hey, does something to my memory. But 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 do you, do you do you do you even get this right? It's you tell a kid don't don't suck your thumbs, and then he does it anyway. Nothing happens. But if you you raise him, hey, here's a story. If you if you do this when I'm not around, someone's going to show up and chop your thumbs off. Um, <laughs> then you have uh, die Gar Traurig Trauriger Geschichte mit dem Feuerzeug. Traurige Geschichte mit dem Feuerzeug. Yeah, the yeah. sad story with the uh, matches. A match girl, it. a girl Life. plays, a girl plays with matches, accidentally ignites herself and burns to death. <laughs> what the? Really? <laughs> yeah, all these stories are like this. Uh, that is that is weird. Yeah. So anyway, anyway, the point was, yeah, uh, you, you, your wife distracted us here. <laughs> Got me. Man. Got me thinking Germans were all hardcore, and now you're now it turns out you guys are watching Care Bears over there. What the I, was, I was I was watching Care Bears as I was growing mm-hmm. up. I was uh, we even had had the we even had German versions of their uh, intro songs. Now and now it's on my mind. Now I will have to listen to it after we're done with this conversation. I will be singing Ich möchte dein Glücksbecher sein. How yeah. about how about a uh, Backe, backe, Kuchen, der Bäcker hat gerufen. <lacht> Wer will guten Kuchen backen? Der muss haben sieben Sachen. Ei und Schmalz, Butter und Salz, Milch und Mehl. Safran macht den Kuchen gelb. Something like that. That's pretty good. Your, your German is pretty good. Your German is pretty, pretty good. The first, the first live stream we had, I started uh, doing some German raps, I remember. Ich habe einen grünen Pass mit einem goldenen Lade drauf. Dies bedingt, dass ich mir auf die Haare drauf. Yeah, remember those. Uh, yeah, back yeah I, I, I didn't understand the word when you did that. I, th- I thought it sounded like Dutch. But maybe I wasn't paying proper attention. I don't know. You, you now it sounds good. Now it sounds work. actually solid. It's pretty, it's, pretty, it's pretty dope. Hey, let me just uh, pull up a source on the screen so people understand what we're talking about. With uh, why... I, I grew up watching Dragon Ball. In German? Yeah, I was watching Dragon Ball in German. That was like my, my, my thing was Dragon Ball Dragon Ball Z. Do you say Z? Do you say Z in English? What, what do you say? You Dragon say Ball Z. We, we say Z. That's like Great Britain. Okay. Maybe Australia okay. where they say Z. Okay, yeah. No, that, that, that was like my favorite thing as I was, as I was uh, yeah, living through <clears throat> that. All right, so... Anyway, let's talk about um, Islamic Dragon Ball. Let's talk about Dawa. I got... A source up on the screen here. <clears throat> um, to show why uh, Ali Dawa, why Ali Dawa would say that in an Islamic state, apostates would be killed. So uh, this is Sahih al Bukhari, 6922. There are tons of passages like this in the Hadiths. But Sahih al Bukhari, 6922, if you want one handy, check out the story here. Narrated Ikrama, some Zanatika, atheists, it's not really though were brought no. to Ali, and he burnt them. Notice he burnt them, right? 
I, I'm, I'm laughing. I'm laughing because because we were told that when ISIS burned people, they were therefore not Muslims because uh -huh. they burned people. And here you're going to see Ali agree that people shouldn't be burnt, but he did it. Abu Bakr did it. They were burning people. And when they would be called out on it, it's okay. Yeah, you're right. Shouldn't, yeah, shouldn't, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't, shouldn't burn them. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Have, have yeah. How is I'm he, sorry. how is he punished? How is Ali <laughs> punished? How is Abu Bakr punished for burning people? I'm sorry for burning these people. I, it won't happen again. I'm sorry. Unless, yeah, they unless they really annoy me and then I'll do it again. And then you, you can <laughs> remind me one more time not to do that. Uh, so they were brought to Ali and he burnt them. The news of this event reached Ibn Abbas, who said, if I had been in his place, no, notice it's not, I'm coming to press judgment on him for violating a Sharia. Right? He says, if I had been in his place, he just says, if I, would, if I were him, I wouldn't have done it that way. I says, wouldn't have done it. If I had been in his place, I would not have burnt them as Allah's messenger forbade it, saying, do not punish anybody with Allah's punishment, fire. So the idea here is, Allah's the one who punishes with fire. You guys punish by other means. He says, I would have killed them according to the statement of Allah's messenger. Whoever changed his Islamic religion, then kill him. And basically, the, met, the standard method of killing apostates is beheading. So you just chop their heads off. So uh, Ibn Abbas is saying... I wouldn't have burned them out or chopped their heads off, which I, I so, mean, if, if I had to choose, I'd rather I'd rather have my head chopped off than be than be burned to death. But um, but yeah, so notice this is this is Ibn Abbas. This is Ibn Abbas pointing out that Muhammad said if anyone leaves his Islamic religion, whoever changed his Islamic religion, kill him. And when we went, I, I mean, well, I can't speak for UAP, but when I quote passages like this uh, in the context of debates and so on uh, historically it happens over and over again i'm told no 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 when it says you kill anyone who leaves the religion what it really means is if someone leaves the religion and then goes out and joins an army that's coming at you then you would kill them in battle mm -hmm. it's like really it, i mean Ali had these people, right? I mean, he they, they were captives and he's burning them to death. And Ibn Abbas says, no, you chop their heads off and so on. But bottom line is you wouldn't need an extra command for that, right? You know you're allowed to fight an opposing army, an army that's coming at you. You know that. Why would you need this extra command? And if that's what Allah, I mean, if that's what Muhammad really meant here, then he is the second worst communicator in all of history after Allah. Just keep in mind when Allah says, hey, if your wife gets out of line, you smack and beat her into submission. Um, if anyone, uh, I mean, whoever, you know, if, if whoever doesn't believe in Allah, fight him. You know, you, when, when, when Allah says, um, fight those who do not believe in Allah, or beat your wives into submission, all these things were told by, uh, Western Muslims. No, what Allah really means is only fight people who are attacking you. Uh, what he really means is tap her with a, a toothbrush. These are the things that he really means. And then you you know, you know, go to the Hadith. What does Muhammad mean here? Whoever changes his Islamic religion, kill him. What do you mean there? Oh, he means if someone goes out. Well, it would have been nice if he'd said that. Since people are getting their heads chopped off over this stuff, it'd be nice to be clear. <clears throat> you know, It would have saved millions of lives over the centuries if Allah and Muhammad had just been better communicators. And so that's how they explain this away. Fortunately now, fortunately, like a breath of fresh air, Ali Dawa comes along and says, yep, David Wood, the apostate prophet, they're right. We're going to, we're going to kill him. Yep. Our, our apologists have been lying all along. Our Western apologists who are saying all these things about what, you know, apostasy really, apostasy laws really are, they were lying. I kind of feel some, some sort of, um, I don't, I don't know how to express it. I don't want to call it relief, but it is this thing. You know, when I, when I decided to, when I was wanting to go out there and to inform people about, about Islam, because I had learned about it and I would uh, studied it intensively when I was a Muslim, as I was leaving and after I left Islam, and I really wanted to inform people out there. One of the big motivators was, uh, man, I see that the, how, how Islam is being... Um, 
so you know sugar coated and whitewashed in the west and the average western person has this completely wrong impression about islam they think oh it's just being misunderstood and there are these these muslim organizations muslim people saying oh you're just misunderstanding islam it has nothing to do with intolerance and violence and any of that and i was seeing that and i was thinking man these people need to stop i need to go I'll go out there say something people need to go out there say something there are not enough people who are who are speaking who are speaking the truth about islam muslims islam is lying its way through the west this cannot happen you know this can't be happening i know exactly what many of these people think i know exactly that many of these islamic scholars and islamic apologists believe in the Islam that I know. I know exactly that they believe that uh, a day will come when the Jews will be fought and killed to sit every single one of them, that the Christians should be subdued, that the atheists shouldn't even be, uh, shouldn't even exist, that the apostates should be killed and uh, and all these things. I know that these people think these things, but that they, but they don't openly say these things. And I want to go out there and, and and tell people what these people actually believe in behind the scenes, behind the soft things that they preach. But now we have somebody here, like Al Dawa, who actually comes out here and who tells people exactly what I wanted people to know. But you know what makes me so mad? Hmm. That we have somebody who actually tells people what I wanted people to know, but I don't see the outrage. I don't see the outrage. I don't see the reaction. I don't see Western people. Uh, I don't see the atheists. I don't see the Christians. I don't see the the, the 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 softer Muslims. I don't see governments. I don't see the outrage. I don't see where where the outrage is. I don't see how these people react to this stuff. People are not reacting to it. Yeah, and and, <laughs> and it it should be two kinds of it should be two kinds of outrage. It should be, on the one hand, wait a minute, you're planning on killing all these people that we know, like. You're planning on killing all these people that we believe have freedom of religion, and you just want to kill all these people? You're going to execute them? One, that's messed up. Two, wow, you guys have been lying to us for decades. It's yeah. <laughs> In Islam, it's like, we lie to you until it's exposed. Then, here's our new lie, and then, okay, we'll believe you on this one. And then that one gets exposed, and then, oh, okay, yeah, now here's our new lie, and then that one gets exposed. And there's never, there's never any, uh, wow... We don't trust you guys anymore. We don't trust your spokesmen. We don't trust your leaders. We don't trust your scholars. We don't trust your apologists because all you guys ever do is lie to us. And then when the truth eventually comes out, you just go on to a new lie. There's never any concept. There's never any concept of that. And it's, uh, wow, it's wild stuff. Is, is, eating the, is eating the Quran worse than killing people over disbelieving? Is, killing the, is, is eating the Quran, is taking a Quran page like this this here <laughs> this Quran is is taking a Quran page out of this this here that this is the one that you ate right this is uh, Fatah this this is what you ate uh, is, is, is really taking tearing this out putting this into your mouth and chewing on it is that really worse than killing people than executing people over their beliefs is this worse is tearing this out? And putting it into your mouth and chewing it worse than oppressing people, than, 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 than sending rape threats, than justifying sexual assault, than justifying oppression. Is this worse? Is eating this worse than al Dawa coming and saying, in, in my ideal system, you should be executed because you cause corruption? Is that, is that really how it is? Is this how people are going to react? I see it's not, it's not just Muslims. It's not, it's not just the Muslims who are angry. I see... All these people, I see, I see, I see people among ex-Muslims, among atheists, among Christians, among so many others who come out and are like, "Oh, that's going too far." What is going too far? Are you kidding me? You are not having the appropriate reaction to this. You're not having the appropriate reaction to somebody telling me in mentioning my name that I should be executed in his ideal world, mm. and that everybody like me who disbelieves and who rejects and who speaks about it should be executed. You have no problem with that, and you have a problem. You are sensitive about 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 somebody ripping a page out and eating the Quran. What kind of hypocrisy? What kind of insanity is this? Mm -hmm. Would it be okay for me to come here and to say, in my ideal system? Would it be okay to say, in my ideal system, in my ideal government, according to my ideology, people who convert to Islam should be put to death? 
Yes, and I'm proud of that. People who convert to Islam should be put to death because they are causing corruption in society. They are uh, they are perverted. They are perverting society. Ju which ju is why ju they just to be kill. clear, for anyone who wants to cut that out and use it out of context, he's not saying that. He's saying if I said that, then you would see a problem. I've yeah. seen, <laughs> I've seen how people, I've seen how people uh, raise complaints. They'll say, "See this clip? The apostate prophet is calling for the deaths." Of anyone who converts to Islam. I, I would like to see that. I would like to see how people react to that. I, would, yeah. I, I even thought of making a test video. If I didn't know the obvious outcome, I wanted to make a test video and publish it on YouTube and, and, and say that and see what and happens. Watch. See, see if I get away with that. If the, I get away with saying that in my ideal system, m people who convert to Islam should be executed because Muslims cause corruption in society. Would yeah. I get away with that? Yeah, you'd be done. You'd be done there. You'd be done on Twitter. Uh, it'd be instantaneous. I would be finished. Yeah. I would be finished. And yet, Ali Dawa can say this, Hijab can say this. So, so anyway, to, to, to make the, the point along along lines you're saying, so so this this Quran here, it's uh, Yusuf Ali. We got, see this? We got, got the bright light on there. But you got, uh, ah, ah, the light is too bright. I guess you can see it there. Oh, there we go. So you've got like, you know, Surah 9, verse 29. And that's mm -hmm. like the cause of endless violence, right? This is why... I would have to be violently subjugated or die on, on you know in, in Islam. So let me just see if I can get that back here. <laughs> and notice there are people there are people flipping out. We're sitting here talking about these guys calling for our deaths, harassing women with uh, imagery of torture and rape because they've been influenced by this religion, this book, and they'll get mad at me for, for holding up a verse that is responsible for millions of deaths. And the subjugation of endless people, and you're worried about this. You're oh poor, poor page, poor, poor paper. Page. You're causing such hurt feelings. Those feelings are the most important thing in the world. Not all the people who are being raped and subjugated. Not all those people. No, <laughs> the piece of paper and all the people who have their feelings based on it. So look at this. Surah 9, verse 29. Fight those who believe not in Allah nor the last day. Notice. It's not. It doesn't say fight people who are attacking you. Fight those who believe not in Allah, yep. nor the last day, nor hold that forbidden which hath been forbidden by Allah and his messenger, nor acknowledge the religion of truth, it's Islam supposedly, from among the people of the book, as Jews and Christians, until they pay the jizya with willing submission and feel themselves subdued. So Christians and Jews actually have it better because if we pay Muslims in, in acknowledgement of our inferiority, we get to survive. Um, atheists, pagans, polytheists—they don't have that—they don't have that that same right. So, when you when you look at the the status of Christians in Pakistan or Egypt or all the places where where Christians were conquered, it's because of this. It's because of this. And for some reason, Christians are oh, whatever you do, don't hurt anyone. Else. So let's let's make sure we just you know get this Arabic part out. Just the Arabic. So, notice what, what, what AP is pointing out is more, <laughs> you'll, have, you'll have more people upset that I do this, yeah. then you'll have over Muslims saying that, you know, they can't wait to start killing people like the apostate prophet. <laughs> and it's absolutely, absolutely insane. It is, it is crazy. It is crazy. There is there's so. so much here. Is this worse? Is eating this worse? Here, you did it again. David Wood did it again. David Wood ate another piece of the Quran. It's for you, it's for you Hijab. This is for you. Take down your tweets. I stopped eating the Quran, but I'm going to keep how, eating the Quran until you take it, them how down. Does it taste? No, how does it taste? I, it keeps, it really? keeps tasting better and better. I, it's, once, you get a, once you get a taste for the Quran, once you get a taste for the Quran, uh, you just want to have more and more, right? I mean, it's, first it tastes horrible, but the more you have... I'm not, I'm not going to, I don't want to spit this verse out. I want it to go through my entire system. <laughs> you want to do that? I'm thinking I have to wash it down with some water here. Don't pollute yourself, David. Don't pollute yourself. That was my biggest concern. That is my biggest concern. Oh, yeah, concern. there it goes. Went down smooth, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, ah, no Quran. <laughs> Surah 9, verse 29. Muhammad Hijab fans, you know where that's going. You know where that's going. You know where it comes out. And you know who had been warned. 
Yeah. All the power is in his hands. I said, you do this. You stop doing this, I'll stop doing this. No, me no stop. Me no stop this. Oh, me strong. Sir 9, People, verse 29. And, and, and wanna, but, go ahead. I want to ask you a question, mm -hmm. everybody. I want to ask this question again and again. I want to reiterate this again and again. Every person, every Muslim apologist, every Muslim who's going to cut this out and is going to put it out there. Yeah, they are. Is, <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> is ripping out the Quran and putting it into your mouth. Or forget about putting it into your mouth. It's ripping the, 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 the Quran and disrespecting it and destroying it. Really worse than what Ali Dawa said. Then saying that people who don't believe in Islam any longer and who make that public should be executed. Is that really worse? Is ripping this apart really worse than saying people should be executed for no longer believing in Islam? Would I be excused if I said that? Is ripping apart the Quran, look, here. Read, ripped apart. Here. Oh! Go on away, here. That is, you whoa! Go. Hey, you're, cool. you're doing it like the pretty one, man. I use the I use the cheap Yusuf Ali one, you're, you're, you're I don't, You've got a I nice don't decorated one. I will take the, the prettiest Quran out here. Is this worse Gosh. than Al-Dawa telling me that I should be executed according to his Islamic beliefs because I cause corruption in society? Oh, man. Is this what? worse than telling people that uh, homosexuals should be executed? Is this worse than telling people that apostates should be executed? Is this worse than saying that there is nothing wrong with slavery? Is this worse than sending rape threats and rape implications to people? Is this worse than telling me that I should be executed publicly on Twitter without anyone doing anything? Is this worse? I, I mean, I'm not going to do that. I don't want. I don't want to make my mouth filthy with this. Is this worse than sending death threats to people and uh, trying to harass people, trying to threaten people, trying to incite harassment and insults and violence? Is all? Is this really worse than all of those things? Is this? Ripping apart of paper, of dumb, stupid paper with absolute garbage inside of it, really worse than saying all those things. This book tells me that I am the worst of creatures, that, that David Wood is the worst of creatures, that the Jews are the worst of creatures, that all the disbelievers are the worst of creatures. Is this really worse than saying all those things? Is this worse than telling us that we should be executed if we don't make a believe in anything? This is the Oscar shot right here. This is your yeah. Twitter shot, guys. This is the part you want to cut out and put on Twitter. Yeah. Is this worse? Is this worse? Is ripping this apart worse? Talking to you, hijab fans. Is this worse than harassing people? Is Talking to you, hijab fans. Harassing people? Is this worse than saying apostates should be killed and we will be proud of that? And watch Not that scared. Answer. Not is this scared. Worse? Is this worse? I will do more. Is this worse? Not scared of you. Not scared of the backlash. Not scared of being banned. They can do it. They can do it. It's a matter of time. They probably demonetize us here sometime this week. And and and. It's worse. Come on, it's man. Worse than, is this worse than telling me I should be killed? We can do this all day. I have like forty Qurans. <laughs> I should order more. Is this worse? Is this worse? Look, the Quran is gone. It's gone. This is it's no longer. Here. Look, look, look how the Quran is, is lingering here. Here, no more Quran. Your Quran is done, it's destroyed. Is this worse than telling me I should be executed and you would be proudly watching because I'm causing corruption in society by no longer believing in your religion? Is this worse than telling me I'm less than cattle and I'm the worst of creatures and I should be executed? Is this worse than telling us that Islam should be imposed on the entire world? And that slavery, enslaving me, who is against Islam, is good. Is this worse than that? Is that worse or is this worse? Here. I'm done with it. The take, Quran is gone. It's gone. Take your tweets down, hijab. It's gone. Anything mentioning any woman, woman, anyone's wife, take it down. Otherwise... We're just getting started. Trust me on this. I've kept my word so far. And I'm telling you, these are just warnings. These are warnings. These are warning shots across the bow because I don't want to go where I'm willing to go, but I'm willing to go. All right. Do you hear this? What's that? Do you hear this? This is the Quran. I don't know if you can hear this, but this is the Quran. This is the Quran. Under your feet. Is this, is this worse? 
is this worse? The Quran is under my feet. Uh, people in Middle Eastern cultures know exactly what that means. Is this worse than telling me that I should be executed for leaving Islam? And nothing yeah. happens about that. Yeah, you, you should be ashamed of yourself for um, tearing, a, tearing up a book that calls for all of our violent, bloody subjugation and death, uh, the violent oppression of women, book that's led to millions and millions and millions of deaths. You should be ashamed of yourself for actually being a man and taking a stand. Well, by the way, I want to add one thing. I don't want any 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 coward, any uh, weasel, any idiot out there to be like, oh, this is misrepresenting me. David Wood is misrepresenting Christians. Apostate prophet is misrepresenting ex-Muslims and atheists. No, I don't care about any coward who thinks that way. I am misre I am not representing anybody out there. I am entirely only representing myself. You can go and represent yourself in whatever cowardly way you want to represent yourself. But I am misrepresent. I am representing myself here as a person who rips up the Quran because I was just told that I should be executed, and there's apparently nothing wrong with that. I yeah. because I because I'm less worth than this dumb piece of paper. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm doing it because I'm trying to avoid some harassment of women that comes out of this religion. And uh, yeah, I don't consider this, you know, the Christian thing to do, uh, apart from, hey, I'm supposed to stand up for, what, for what's right. I consider this just being a man, right? God, God, if God made you a man and you see, and I'm not even talking about, you know, the sexes here. I'm just saying if God made you a man, you're supposed to, you know, stand up for what's right. And so if you see people heaping abuse on women and deciding that they're going to encourage the rest of their the people in their ideology to do the same um sometimes you just got to say no and <laughs> and and when everyone stabs you in the back for it well guess what you can make me look like a porcupine i'm still coming after this book <laughs> i think we made our point today yeah David. i think we got i think we got the point across yeah, I, I, I didn't, I didn't, I, I hadn't planned this. I thought we were just going to. Talk no, we about, weren't. This, uh, this was totally, <laughs> this was totally unplanned, unplanned. I was, uh, I, I mean, I was, I was mentioning, I was mentioning my plans for, you know, later this week when, you know, we'd have some, uh, some beer and some bacon and so on. But, uh, you know, just all of this stuff from these guys and, and the fact that this is the true heart of Islam, right? This is the true heart of Islam. You guys have to die. Um, we're going to subjugate you. We're going to oppress women. And it's all of this. And you're too cowardly to stand against it. You don't have the guts to stand against it. You don't have the guts to oppose us. That's the message, right? If you guys did not protect 11 and 12-year-old girls while gangs of men are raping them and pimping them out and drugging them and beating them, if you didn't stand up for them until... A, a, you know, some media embarrassment actually forced you to do something about it. If you didn't stand against that, and if and if once it was exposed, you said, okay, we're still going to protect the ideology. We're still going to make sure that no one ever criticizes the ideology. Think about that, right? Th this is this is what Muhammad Hijab and Ali Dawa have been seeing all their lives. We can literally gang rape their daughters, and once we get caught, and when we get caught, they will still. Praise our religion. These people are so weak, they can never withstand us. That's why they're escalating. They don't believe that anyone is willing to stand in their way. They believe that they are dealing with entire nations of complete cowards. And they're not that far off the mark. They're not that far off the mark. But there are some of us, there are some of us who say, not on our watch. Exactly. I, I want to say, um, everybody who's, who's, who's voicing their support, uh, I, I would like to do this in the name of everybody who, is, who really who wants to do this, who wants to be here in my place or next to me or next to David and who wants to do this. I'm doing this uh, for all of you. David, David is doing it. Maybe for all of you, I can speak in this uh, for him. But uh, I, I would love to represent you if you want to be represented by this. Oh, I mean, this I mean, for you. I mean, a AP, think about it. Seriously, if Hijab simply takes down all his tweets, um, now later, later, later this week, 
if he hasn't taken down his his tweets and I go ahead and and put forward a more formal warning, um, he's not going to get this deal. Right now, it's just if he takes down all of his tweets that mention a woman, uh, anyone's wife, things like that. If he takes all that stuff down, he's still allowed to. He can blast away at us. He can blast away at us. Um, just not crossing certain lines. I'll stop. It's done. We're done. We're done. Not going to be doing this anymore until you guys cross some serious lines. This is what you. This is what I will do if you cross some serious lines. Other than that, I don't want to do this. I don't want to draw. I, pic- I don't want to draw pictures of your profit. I don't want to. I don't want to tear up your book. I definitely don't want to eat your book. It's not the easiest thing in the world to do, but I'll do it. But I mean, if you if you don't if you don't get the point, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going farther. And as AP was saying right there, if you want to, you know. <laughs> If you want to come along beside him, that 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 will that opportunity will eventually arise because that's what's going to happen. It's going to happen. I don't know if I can. Other people, other people will be invited. Other people will be invited, and there is no limit to the ways that I can come up with of degrading your book. As 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 sick and perverted as Muhammad Hijab's mind is with coming up with perverted sex and torture fantasies. You know, I'm beyond that with the different ways of torturing and defiling and desecrating your book. So if you, I mean, if you think Muhammad Hijab, this is the sickest dude since his prophet. You know, I mean, at least Muhammad Hijab doesn't walk around covered in semen, unlike his prophet. But I mean, even if you're you're thinking how sick and disgusting this dude is and the stuff he's coming up with, the golden showers and this and that, I will come up with, I, I promise you, and you, you may see it, you may see it. I will come up with vastly, vastly more depraved ways of dealing with your book. Muslims who are watching, if, if you have an ounce of concern for your book, then you would go to Muhammad Hijab and say, you need to take your stuff down. These guys are not joking. And then we're done. Me strong. <laughs> me no take down, me strong. Oh! I feel so much relief right now. I feel so much relief. <laughs> I feel so much happiness right now. I will really? take a picture of this. Is tearing up the Quran have that impact on you? Do you feel liberated? Oh, there is a liberated man, feeling, right? I like we live, like you. people live in fear of doing this stuff. And they just yeah. do it, and then you realize, wait a minute, what? What, what are people scared of? Man, I feel so relieved. I feel, I feel like something is going through my body. I feel, I feel so, I feel so happy about it. I feel so happy that I'm being that I'm. Woo! Woo! You feel that. You feel the power. We feel it. We're feeling the power, Muhammad Hijab. We're feeling good. Ali Dawa. <laughs> like you guys feel when you, oh, I feel me strong. Me me beat up woman. Ha <laughs> ha, me strong. I have, Muhammad me, Hijab, me, I feel me much t- better. Me, me talk about killing better. all these apostates. I feel much better after ripping, rip, rip, ripping apart the Quran than you feel when you send rape threats to other people. I feel much better than that. Believe me. <laughs> ah, oh <man>. yeah, <laughs> uh, I will sleep good tonight. <laughs> it, By the way, it, this, this completely contradicts with my video. I, I just planned a video <laughs> in which I in which I talked about. Uh, I don't I, I don't think ripping apart and eating the Quran is bad. I don't want to do it. I don't do anything uh, for now. I did other things. In that liar! This, you this you hypocrite! You hypocrite! <laughs> I have video of you doing it. I, I completely disrupted the plan now, but I'll, I'll publish that video anyway because it will make some uh, a point. <sighs> messages, Seriously. messages tomorrow. We... David, shame on you! <laughs> Amazing man. Amazing. Okay, I think I think we should call it a night. All right. Uh, should I, should I read out these uh, super chats real quick? Sure. Because a bunch right. of them were coming up while we, especially while we were uh, having fun with the Quran. <laughs> um so poll dog we uh we read uh, your comment earlier heavenly knight said remember the golden rule to treat each other how you want to be treated how will god trust us if we cannot lay down our life for him like jesus christ did and yeah that's that's uh that's definitely part of it right um <clears throat> everyone everyone agrees on some certain basic rules and if I ever, guys, if I ever get to the point where I'm calling on people's, uh, calling for people's deaths and heaping abuse on women, then by all means, put me in check. So that's how Absolutely. I would want to be treated. I would want you to do whatever you need to do to stop me from behaving horribly. 
And so that's how I would want to be treated, and therefore that is how we will treat Muhammad Hijab. Um, Steadfast and Easy said, a Patreon add-on, regards to the wife and kids, God bless all. Uh, Ryan 92 said, we need World Eat Quran Day. <laughs> <laughs> No, people don't need to eat the people. Other people don't need to eat the Quran. I mean, if if you, if, for, if once we eventually get to the point where we're, uh, you know, making this a, a wider experience, just just so everyone knows, I'm, I'm going to tell most people not to do this. Right? It's a, cer a certain kind of person who should be doing this. Right? I mean, if you're focused on evangelism and things like that, you you, you don't want to be you don't want to be doing this sort of thing. Um, if you're more of a protector type, in other words, you understand that. You know, certain people can't go out and oppose and oppose this because you know it might be too dangerous for them or something like that. Whereas you're not concerned about that kind of thing, then those are the kinds of people I would encourage uh, to do this. But yeah, we will come up with all kinds of ways of dishonoring and desecrating the Quran. Uh, but yeah, pretty fun uh, world eat world eat Quran day. Uh, we should retitle this live stream, by the way. Yeah, Cindy Lou said uh, most of the Christians support you eating the Quran. Don't let them fool you. Yeah, and I, I, I think at the end of the day, especially if people find out what the reasoning is, I think lots of people <laughs> tend to think that, you know, I'm glad that there are some people like David Wood and the apostate prophet and Sam Shimon and so on to deal with the Muhammad hijabs and the Ali Dawas of the world in a way that doesn't involve violence, right? Uh, yeah. I think a lot of people are saying, I would never do that, but I'm glad there there is someone who will do that, who will do that stuff. Um, <clears throat> Caitlin Jennings. I, oh, go ahead. I don't, I don't encourage anybody to, to do this themselves unless you really want to. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Caitlin Jennings says, I recently discovered both of you. What is your opinions on Christians reading the Quran? Oh, I actually had, I don't know if it was by the same person, but I got a couple questions about uh, reading the Quran. Um, yeah, Caitlin, this is, I, I, I don't believe that, oh, you might you might be swayed by it. If you, <laughs> The Quran is the worst, most horrible book I've ever read in my entire life. Um, I'm, again, I'm not I'm not saying that because I disagree with Islam. Uh, there are books like, you know, uh, David Hume's Dialogues Concerning Natural Religion, which I disagree with, but it's brilliant. It's brilliant stuff, right? You can acknowledge um, something that is brilliantly written, even if you disagree with it. Um, I mean, I would agree with very little of what's in Plato's Republic. Plato's Republic is one of the best books I've ever read. Um, so it's not it's not just uh, it's not just you know, I don't like the Quran, therefore I'm going to, I'm going to say mean things about it. Um, <clears throat> the, the reason I, I can't just say, yes, read the Quran is because I don't think the vast majority of Christians could ever make it through the Quran. It is very, very difficult reading. It jumps around from topic to topic, very difficult to understand without the aid of commentaries and so on. Um, Incredibly it's, stupid. it's not, it's not in order. It's not in chronological order. Um, so basically what what I want to avoid is I don't want Christians thinking, hey, I want to study Islam so I can reach Muslims. Let me start by reading the Quran, because then you're not going to finish the Quran. You're going to give up and then you're not you're not going to, you know, you're not going to go out reaching Muslims. Right. So I would encourage I would encourage reading the Quran topically. So pick a topic that you're interested in, like, you know, what the Quran says about Jesus or something like that. Then look up, and you, you can go to a site like Answering Islam or something, or you can get a Quran with an index. Look up everything the Quran says about Jesus. Read those passages. Um, if you're interested in, you know, in responding to terrorism or something, look up everything the Quran says on, on that topic, rather than try to, to read it straight through. Um, but I would encourage, not, not, not just with the Quran, but with the Hadith as well, um, pick a topic you're interested in, because that's going to help you get through when you're reading very difficult, boring material. If you're really interested in it, then it will help you get through. Um, but it, you know, in the, if you just start reading the Quran or the Hadith, you're going to get bored because it covers all kinds of stuff that you will definitely not be interested in. So, that would be my advice there. What are your thoughts on that? Should people be reading the Quran? I think they should be doing that. Of course, I think um, I would encourage everybody to, if if you actually want to, um, you know, uh, if you actually want to know something about Islam, you should definitely, um, if you want to do that to yourself, you should read the Quran. It is, I have to say, Muslims don't like reading the, that book. It is uh, incredibly painful to read. 
I, I know for a fact it is a very well-known thing among Muslims that it is very hard to read the Quran because uh, you know, no one wants to do it and Muslims usually blame it on, on other reasons. But uh, it's simply, the book is simply very hard to read. It is repetitive, it is uh, completely meaningless, it repeats stuff here and there and across uh, the, the book on the other side again. But if you want to know about Islam, read the book. It will tell you more than I can tell you and more than David can tell you. You will realize that it is uh, incredibly incoherent, very hateful, uh, very violent, pretty and rough. definitely pretty stupid. It's pretty rough. Pretty rough. Yeah. I tried to read it recently, and I, I, I just had to stop. I couldn't go on. I couldn't. I had to force myself to keep reading. I, and every I, time I read it, I felt very dark when I, after I, after I was done. You know? I, I had to, I had to force myself years ago to, to read it because I read. I've read the relevant. I, I had read the relevant passages, you know, over and over and over again. I had um, I had plenty of Quran verses memorized and so on. But I realized I never sat down to just read it straight through. So I decided, okay, I need to I, I need to read the entire Quran. Just go cover to cover. And man, that is painful to do. That is painful to do. So I I mean I read the Quran now in you know multiple versions and translations and so on. But it is painful. It's it's. I have to read this because I have to know this stuff. But my goodness, uh, uh, the uh, the uh, great twentieth century skeptic who eventually became a kind of theist, uh, Anthony Flew, said it best. He said he said to read the Quran is to do penance. I mean, pen, <laughs> penance. That's where you punish yourself for your sins, right? He said that's that's what it is. And 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 uh, and AP AP is right. You, we we tend to think, oh, Muslims are really you know reading the Quran. If you ask Muslims, do you guys read the Quran? So oh, yes, we read the Quran. We've all got it memorized. And, uh, nope, no. A few, a few of them, a few of them read it and, and memorize it and so on. And uh, they will. Lots of Muslims will memorize certain passages for their prayers and things like that. But I was shocked at how little the. I was shocked at how little Muslims knew about their Quran. When I started debating and so on, I would just talk to Muslims afterwards and they would say, well, I, 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 I believe in Islam because of the women's rights. And so I started bringing up verses they had no clue what I was talking about. Like 98% of the time, they would have no clue what I was talking about when I'm quoting the Quran to them and they just didn't know. So the, the, the reason is Muslims do get their minds around their basic practices of, okay, you have to do this on Friday and you have to do this and you have to take the Hajj and they, they get that. But we see them walking around and, oh, you've got a prayer mat and, oh, you're, you're dressed a certain way. We think, oh, you must be very knowledgeable about your religion. Nope. You've been told, hey, these are the core practices you need to do and you follow those and other than that, you stay out of it, let the scholars deal with the actual knowledge. Well, the, the number of people, of, of people among mm -hmm. Muslims who actually have... Um, uh, read the Quran, who have read the entire book, is extremely low. There, it's it's a it's a tiny minority of people who have actually read the Quran cover to cover. And uh, uh, among those, most of them have read it in Arabic, uh, while most Muslims don't know Arabic. People who have actually read it in a, in a language that they understand, uh, the percentage of those is extremely low. I would say definitely less than five percent. So most Muslims don't know about the have most Muslims haven't read their book the vast majority of Muslims haven't read their book haven't even come close to reading their book so um, and and I will I will tell you if you want to ask me whether you should read the Quran a Muslim will tell you that you shouldn't read the Quran by yourself but that you should consult a scholar and you should consult ex Jesus I will tell you read the Quran by yourself don't listen to them read the Quran by yourself it's all you need to it's all you need to know more about Islam mm -hmm. Um, Donald Steyer didn't leave a comment. Uh, Cindy Lou said, make some Quran toilet paper merch. <laughs> Again, guys, I do not want to go down this road. That is, <laughs> guys, if you've, if you've seen, now, maybe you, maybe for you Muslims who are watching, especially you're probably thinking, no, but you insult Muhammad. You do this. Yeah. Guys, notice I have been making fun of Muhammad and the Quran for years, but it's always content based, right? I'm, there's an argument there. I'm giving an argument. I'm giving evidence. And in the context of giving the evidence, I also use sarcasm and mockery and so on like that. It's to add to the point, to make the point stick in your minds. I don't just sit around making fun of stuff with no point, right? Which, which is, that's, that's, that's what I'm, that's what hijab is making us do. Just, hey, we're just here to insult your book until you, until you actually, uh, you know, stop being such a total dirtbag, right? Um, yeah. So, but, so anyway, the point is, I would normally... If, if when a Christian says we need to use the Quran as toilet paper, and look, look, come on, I, I, I don't, I, I, 
No, come on, stop that. But now I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not ruling anything out now. I'm not ruling anything <laughs> out because because again, I'm willing to go. Apart from violence, apart from committing violence, there is. There's not much of a limit to where I'm willing to go on this one. Uh, Awestruck Child said, Hey, just sending you both some love. Please, please try your best to stay safe. We're in really dark times right now. Thank the Lord Jesus Christ for strong men like you willing to take a stand. Uh, Donald Steyer says, The Kirat, the Kirat Conundrum with David Wood and Al-Fadi. Hi, guys. I've been having a lively conversation with Ahmed Abdullah in the previous video. Is he one of your regulars? Hi, AP. Uh, I'm pretty terrible with names, so maybe you guys, maybe you guys would know if uh, if he's a regular. Um, Cindy Lou says, "When is AP going to get saved?" <laughs> that that's that's a whole complicated topic right now. I don't think we would be. <laughs> I don't think we should be going into that right now. <laughs> uh, VJ. VJ says the difference between you and hijab seem to be what it's driven by. David and Ridvan does it out of love for Muslims, so they get saved. Hijab out of hate. Yeah, and 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 there there can be multiple reasons. Like I want you know I want to break this hold that Islam has on people, um, so that they can actually, you know, seriously consider all, an alternative to Islam. Um, but at the you know at the end of the day, at the end of the day, there's also hey this ideology calls for the violent subjugation of the entire world and so whatever your position you should be standing you should be standing against this and even you muslims who don't want to live under that and i know you don't want to live on it you should be against people like like ali dawa you should be leaving your religion because your religion calls for that but uh yeah what are your thoughts on that um sorry i i told i i missed this right now but he's talking about the difference between us and hijab right because a lot of people a lot of people i matter of fact i have seen a lot of comments on this you guys are just like muhammad hijab he's no. being disrespectful and you guys are being disrespectful muhammad hijab is motivated by the fact that his uh, that his islamic religion uh as he openly admits orders him to subjugate um the enemies of islam which just means somebody who opposes Islam. Uh, enemy is a very tough word that Islam randomly, casually applies to any random person who uh, doesn't want to be um, violated by Islam. So he is motivated by his religion telling him that he should impose his religion on the entire world and that he should um, uh, reach every single household and that he should make Islam win in the end. And in on, on that path, he will hate everybody who has an issue with uh, that, who has an issue with his motives and who has an issue with his religion. He is motivated by that. He's motivated by hate. He has clearly told me that he hates me, that he's supposed to hate me because Muhammad Hijab adheres to an ideology, to an idea that is known as uh, al-wara wal bara which means um, lo loyalty and disavowal, which means you are supposed to be loyal to Allah and his messenger and his uh, and, 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 and the Muslims and you are supposed to disavow the non-Muslims. You are supposed to love what Allah loves and hate what Allah hates. David Wood and I and everybody who doesn't want to live under Islamic law is what Allah hates, which is why he hates us. That is his ideology. It's not what I'm saying. It's what he believes in. I'm not motivated by hate. I'm not motivated by uh, punishing people, by, by sacrificing lives for paper, uh, which was the topic here. I'm motivated by... By, 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 by going against the system that I was brought up with that taught me hate, that taught me darkness and sadness and hopelessness, that spreads sadness and hopelessness and anger and violence and hate into the world. I want to stop it. I want people to get away from that, to live for a better world and live for a better future. Mm -hmm. We are motivated by that. I will proudly say that I am definitely much, much better than Mohammed Hijab in my motives and my feelings. No, no question. No question. Uh, I've said it before. I spent years in prison. Hijab and Ali Dawa are two of the worst people I've ever met in my life. Yes, yes. And I've met some really, really bad, messed up people. Uh, and I've been a really bad, messed up person. And these are some messed up dudes, and it's just amazing that they become the champions of a certain religion. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Angelique News says, David, peace be upon him, please eat the verses of plowing women. Now that brings up that brings up an interesting issue because I was just thinking I was going to eat Surah six verse one hundred eight since that's the one that uh, Muhammad Hijab clearly has no respect for. Uh, when I have you know some bacon and and beer to wash wash the Quran down with, but maybe we'll have a little <laughs> a little request situation right where, where 
or uh, we'll be live and you can request verses to me uh, for me to eat. Um, <laughs> so that might be fun. Uh, <laughs> That sounds like a good idea. Yep, yep, yep. See that that this how this how we come up with uh, awesome ideas. Hey, Josh, you can stop us anytime. You can stop us anytime. You stop being the most arrogant, pride-filled person on the planet. I don't uh, know if I want to stop anymore. I don't. I don't think I can stop anymore. I just got such a such a. I rush, know such a, it is right. This. It is right. I mean, it's like it's like skydiving or something, right? Yeah. <laughs> Bungee jumping. I don't know if I can stop. <laughs> <laughs> I, t- I, I I wasn't joking. You, you get a taste for the Quran. You just want to. Now every time I see the Quran, I'm like, oh, come on, gotta get a bite. Arr, 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 arr. Right? Ah. Um, and Angelique News also said. <laughs> Angelique News also said, David, peace be upon him. Do not forget to shred it when you eat it. So she's talking about uh, the Quran, <laughs> talking about the, the, the Quran being shredded in Surah 15, 90 to 91. David the Goliath says, uh, Islam is basically a BDSM relationship with Allah. And maybe that's why Hijab has all this weird BDSM yeah. uh, language when he's talking to talking to people. Uh, Where do you think where he gets it from? Yeah. Zukmidic Midic, uh, didn't, oh, didn't leave a comment. Hindu historian said, you guys are indeed the arms of the Almighty. Bhagavad Gita 2, 31 to 38. He's saying we are the arms of the Almighty according to Bhagavad Gita. And this Hindu historian saying this, pow. Yeah, I doubt it, but but thank you. I, I doubt it. it. I doubt it too. But the point is, he's trying to make a nice. <laughs> he's making a nice comment, right? Thank you, thank Donald. You. I say it to everybody Hindu historian. I also say it to 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 the to to, to Christians. I say it to everybody. So um, yeah, sorry. Donald, but thank you. I appreciate it. Donald Steyer said, "Who is this Allah anyway that he thinks that threatening people will make them convert to a false prophet and a false god?" Exactly. Now notice that's just basic common sense. And that's what everyone misses somehow. Amateur Ant said his job is just mad because Epstein never invited him to Pedo Island so he can practice what his prophet did. Man, Man. it's... it's... (laughs) Okay. Warren Maroney (laughs) says, I've eaten food that disagreed with me, but I've never eaten food that disagreed with itself. (laughs) (laughs) Bell says, uh, thank you for bringing education to the Western countries about these subjects and the laughs that go with it. Aaron Larson said, Christian men like girls. Momo was the one wearing Aisha's nighty. That is true. That, that might be some points to be uh, brought up here in the in the near future. Uh, Rissify says, do you mm, do you equally analyze Christianity critically to uh, critically as Islam? So this is a, a criticism I get often. David, why don't you apply the same uh, cr- the same criticism to Christianity? Um, I did a long time ago. Right. So whenever I'm encountering an ideology, my my first in- inclination is tell me what your main argument is. What What's the main evidence you have to support this position? And when you do that with Islam, you get a bunch of complete nonsense. Right. Any any argument they give you that you examine turns out to be complete idiotic nonsense. Right. Oh, the Quran's been perfectly preserved. Well, one, that's stupid to think that if a book were perfectly preserved, that would make it the word of God. Two, the Quran, the preservation of the Quran was an absolute catastrophe. It was a disaster. It takes you five minutes of research to see all of these, you know, what an epic horror show the early preservation of the Quran was. So that, But that's what you find with every single argument that you examine in Islam. Now, whether you are atheist, agnostic, whatever, you can actually agree with what I'm saying here when you examine the core evidence for Christianity, it's not like that. You you would think, if you examine Islam, you would think, and a lot of people do think, well, if I examine the resurrection, the main argument for Christianity, I'm going to get the same thing. I'm going to find out that it's just a bunch of nonsense. That's not what you find. Keep in mind, I came at this as an atheist, but it's not what you find. You find all of the facts to support the resurrection. The only question is, are you willing to acknowledge a miracle? You could say, no, I'm a naturalist. I'm, I'm not going to believe in a miracle. But if you're willing to grant a miracle or the possibility of a miracle, you have a pretty good case for a miracle there. You have you have uh, his death, which was a public event. Scholars across the board, atheist scholars, agnostic scholars, uh, Jewish scholars, liberal Christian scholars, conservative Christian scholars, everyone agrees Jesus died by crucifixion. And also across the board, everyone agrees that Jesus' followers were convinced that he appeared to them on multiple occasions after he had risen from the dead. So you start, the point is it's not, it's not nothing. You're, you're stuck with a little mystery there. Why did all of these people think 
that a man who had died had risen and appeared to them as a resurrected human being. Um, you can start going down the list. You can start, you know, hallucinations, this, that. The, the other explanations don't work. If you're if you're just an atheist or a naturalist, that probably won't be enough by itself to to push you towards Christianity. The point is, there's something there, right? There is there is a case there. In Islam, yeah. you just don't have it. Now, if you're an, yeah. if you're a rabid atheist who's opposed to all evidence, like the apostate prophet, um, someone who can't, who's in stubborn rebellion against God, someone who spends all night cursing uh, the God that he says he doesn't believe in, then maybe, maybe. And I uh, even I even have a message from him in a previous live stream where he admitted that he is a horribly immoral atheist. I've got it. I've got the, I've got the screen <laughs> show. So just so oh, everyone you knows, that. you saved that one. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, I guess that was David's answer. My answer is that I, uh, I I don't know if you're done with your answer. I, I don't really care if you're done with your answer. I just want to talk now. Uh, I have too much too much self confidence now. I cannot be stopped by respect and common sense anymore. Um, yeah, I have I have equally scrutinized Christianity uh, just as much as I scrutinize. Not not no no no. That would be unfair of me to say. Not definitely not just as much as I scrutinized uh, Islam, but I have um, critically analyzed Christianity um, very much, given it a chance, and I even wanted to really uh, believe in it. There was a time, especially not too long ago, actually, where I really uh, felt like I need it in my life, where I need something in my life. And the only religion that I really that I really um, felt close to, that I felt... Um, attracted to and that I felt what uh, made sense was Christianity. I thought it was not only the most efficient religion as it turns out historically and um, you know socially it was also um, the only religion that the only religion that gives me I, I felt like the right uh, beliefs and feelings that I that I would um, that, that I felt but um, of course there's also a lot about Christianity that I completely disagree with be it theologically and morally. But the thing is that eventually I just didn't, did not, uh, I was just not convinced that uh, that the evidence for Christianity is convincing enough to make me believe in Christianity. But it's not even about Christianity. It's not about Christianity, to be very honest. It's about uh, the belief in God. It's not about Christianity. The belief in God, the concept of God itself, is something that I just couldn't agree on. And um, I'm currently preparing a Turkish uh, video on 10 reasons why I don't believe in God. I will probably also prepare the same thing in English because I kind of liked how it turned out. Yeah, uh, I notice you're trying to uh, run that by your Turkish audience first before uh, no. <laughs> the rest of us school you on it. No, 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 no. <laughs> I didn't publish it. It's, it's not for my Turkish channel. It's for uh, I joined this uh, Turkish Atheist Association, which is the first atheist uh, organization in the in the Middle East in the Muslim world. That's why I'm. Uh, they they kind of asked me to make some videos for them, and I decided to make that. And so I will do that in, in English too. Uh, and people who ask me this question very frequently can then watch it there. So my problem is is rather with the belief in God itself more than the more than with Christianity. If I was convinced that a God made sense or could exist or that I could believe in God, then I could explore the options. But since that doesn't work, I can't get to Christianity. If I did believe in that, I could possibly believe in the evidence of Christianity. But I don't believe in that, which is why I can't come to Christianity. So anyway, it's a long topic. I will, uh, I will, I will elaborate further on that if possible, wait, and wait. maybe even engage in debates on that stuff. Wait, wait, wait. Should I be? I mean, I believe in God. Should I be acting like a job here? I will refute you, boy. You don't believe in God because you're a coward. Huh? You're not strong. You're not strong. Oh. That's, why, to... that's why you'll be executed. <laughs> you should challenge me to a fist fight. You should go after my own entire family. I challenge you to an MMA match. Show you me strong. <laughs> I will show you God exists in the ring. Yeah, yeah. Like Khabib. After I'm beaten up, after my, my nose is bleeding, I will be finally, oh, yeah, I was wrong. Oh, I was wrong. I was wrong. I accepted I was wrong. <laughs> uh, Ryan92 says, gosh, I'm going to try to zoom through these because there's a bunch uh, A bunch popped up when, when you started ripping up the Quran for no reason against my protest. Uh, <laughs> all right, guys, I'm going to do these fast uh, unless there's something we need to comment. Ryan92 says, David, is, is it possible Jesus was the lamb that took the breastfeeding verses of the Quran away? I also get sometimes, was, uh, was Jesus the lamb that poisoned Muhammad? Uh, no. Now, if you want to, if you want to say... <laughs> That's weird. If you want to say that God was behind that, then then you could then you could I think you could argue that. 
Hindu historian uh, says for eating a Quran verse, Rael uh, Carol um, didn't leave comments, although Carol left a, a super sticker. Um, Cindy Liu says, uh, yes, thanks for the great content. Sarah Hagie says, uh, you two are awesome. That's true. Edit Sweet said, if I buy a hot dog for $10, name it Muhammad. And then <laughs> he said, if I buy a hot dog for $10, name it Muhammad and then sell it for $20, have I made a profit? <laughs> God. You get, you get the joke? Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, and okay. then we have Hindu Historian and LD with super stickers. And uh, LD didn't leave a comment. Lytle said, you guys are shaming the devil. That's how we roll. Lucas MMV says, man, I think this is the best use of a Quran I've ever seen. Cindy Lou said, feed it to a pig. Might happen. Could happen, hijab. If you're watching this, hijab. Uh, boneless Christian Wing said, I need a Quran. I'm sick of microwave bean burritos. Shercules, Shercules says, Shercules, get it? Shirk? Like Hercules, but Shercules. Uh, said, that Quran is finished, boy. Your Quran is, your Quran is Quran finished. finished. That's finished. how we have, that's why, I, that's why we have to roll when we're uh, destroying the Quran. Ouch. Look, Look at that. That Quran is finished. Look at this Quran. This Quran is finished, boy. You see the power? You see the power? <laughs> you see the power, hijab? You see our power? Oh, boy. We're your teacher. We're your teachers. Teaching you I'm morals your... and lessons the hard way. <laughs> I'm your teacher, boy. I teach the Quran. See? This is how I teach the Quran. Uh, Cheryl R. with the super sticker. Jesus Truth said, eating the Quran is like eating Hitler's Mein Kampf. Yeah, uh, except uh, there's not going to be a bunch of people wanting to kill you if you uh, dis dishonored Hitler's Mein Kampf. Seraphim said, uh, book is greater than human life. That is sad. Great job, guys. God bless you all. As Toya06 says, yay, I was just waiting for AP to do it. <laughs> But it was better when both you and AP <laughs> ripped the Quran. Beautiful. Yeah, that's going to be on Twitter. That's probably on Twitter already. Um, Giggity Troll says, never stop. Souls are saved every time people leave this awful religion and turn to Jesus Christ. Aaron Larson said, it's not what goes into a man that defiles him. Quran pages. But what comes out of him. <laughs> Sick golden shower taunts. Oh, I'm going to use that. Aaron Larson, you know, if you ever want to show that I stole something from you, you can point back. Um, to where, you know, you said it right here before I said it. But when I say it in a video, I, I don't credit people. I steal stuff all the time, mainly from Sam Shamoon. Uh, and also from my wife. Um, oops. Oh, your wife? Her wife said it. You just admitted <laughs> that your wife has spoken against Islam. Oh, this is why we come at her. Oh! <laughs> um, but no, did, did you catch that? <laughs> yeah. By the so, way, I will, I, will bring my, I will bring my dog here tomorrow by the way my dog will be walking in this room wow. i will not clean it up gosh man we are Ooh. so we're so dead <laughs> we're so dead which is weird because i understand i under i understand i have you know i'm psychopath i understand why it doesn't bother me i don't understand you you're a weird dude i am frustrated <laughs> you can only push a man so far i'm passionate Donald Steer says, the Bible says, wait, let me go back to that other comment by Aaron Larson. That was good. It's not what goes into a man. I, I'm just going to screenshot this real quick. I'm going to steal this. It's not what goes into a man that defiles him, Quran pages, but what comes out of him, sick golden shower taunts. That's what defiles <laughs> him. That is, ex that is exactly what Jesus said. That is interesting. Um, Donald Steer says, the Bible says you can tell if a tree is good by its fruit, which is why Islam is bad and should be stayed away from. Uh, Prem Kumar didn't leave a comment. Uh, Arlen three, love and respect you more. <laughs> DWAP, I no longer wonder where your heart is. <laughs> love it. Patreon coming. Uh, be careful, Arlen. I don't know where you're getting your money that you send me, but you've been sending me a lot, and I, I'm horrible at like contacting people and, and thanking them, mainly because I don't like it when people. Well, when I give someone money, I'm like, I don't want you to contact me. I want you to do what I'm sending you money to do. Don't waste time contacting me. Um, but <laughs> so anyway, thank you for the uh, contributions. Bell said Jesus insulted the leaders of his time. He called them snakes. It was the worst insults he could have called them for that time. Yes, uh, Jesus was pretty savage with the scribes and Pharisees. Um, I'm sorry for the noise, by the way. There's a lot of garbage on my floor. Lots of garbage. Sophia Agape said 
This is so you can buy some milk and bananas for your Quran flakes. Oh, I could get a, I could get a, I could get a, and and we have people here that can do graphic design, guys. If you if you want to make a Quran flakes <laughs> box design graphic, I will put it on a box and be uh, eating it, and I will be pouring out Quran flakes. I hope you're watching Muhammad Hijab because again, I do not want to do this. But you're revving us up. You're getting us excited about doing this. If you if you had a if you had a non roid filled brain cell left in your head, you would take down some tweets and we're done. We're done, dude. We'll see what happens. Uh, Bell's uh, mamacita is only a couple left. Uh, May the Lord bless you and keep you safe. I am praying for you. I am with you. Uh, Truth seeker says read Quran by Bill Warner on politicalislam.com. Uh, AS A S says Allah sent another holy goat today from above Ridwan after the goat named David. It is pretty cool <laughs> that that because we eat the Quran, people call us the goats. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's good. Isn't That's that cool? Good. Everyone totally. and I, I I didn't get it. Everyone's when I when I ate the Quran that first time, everyone started. I just saw everyone said David is the goat, the goat. And I was thinking, cool, I'm the greatest of all time. They really like what I'm doing. Then I got it later. Oh, goat! I get it. <laughs> Eating the Quran. Uh, Christian Knight said, eat chapter 929. That is what I ate. Christian Knight, you got to go back. You got to go back a little. That is what I ate. Ray Jake says, challenging people to a fist fight over an intellectual argument is admitting to defeat. So if he wins, does it mean Allah is God in, in his mind? If you're, yeah, I, yeah, me won because Allah make me strong. It's got to be something like that. Um, Mittul Panchal says, plural, diverse pagans suffered from all religions. That's true. Well, yeah, every, every, Everyone has suffered from all kinds of things in this world. But you look and you say, there's something special about this Islam in terms of the suffering that it is foisting upon humanity. Fireblade didn't leave a comment. Uh, Ray Jakes, going back to what we were talking about earlier, says the difference is Jesus doesn't tell people to kill those who don't believe. That's true. And that is something else that seems fairly unique to Islam. All right. I think we got through the super chats. That was a lot. People really yep. like that. Say, we should just do Thanks live streams where we where we mess with the Quran, man. People love it. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you so much, really. All right. It is. It is. We need to. We needed to get it out. I hope the message got out. I hope the message really got out. There is no. Um, it, it's. I. I could. I could sit here. I don't care. I don't care about these conventions. I don't care about uh, these rules. I don't care about being respectful at all. I could rip up the Quran. I could use it for whatever I want. I don't care at all. And I have a personal issue with 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 with, with Islam and the Quran anyway. I can justify. It. I don't care at all what anybody says. Give me a break. But um, I hope the point came across. The point that uh, that we are making. The point that I was making as I was ripping uh, up the Quran. And I hope. I hope the Muslims who are who are outraged about this, I hope they take the videos and they show exactly what I said as I was ripping up the Quran they won't. and completely destroying it. I hope they show exactly what I said as I was destroying the Quran and making it disappear in front of your eyes. I hope they show that. That because that was the point. I will this 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 respects my right to exist, my life. People here who are representatives of this religion and of this ideology go out there and openly say that I should be killed, that I shouldn't have a right to live. And as long as that is accepted as normal, as long as they think they can do that, I will do this even further. I will do this even more. And I will enjoy this. And hear the sound of it. Hear the sound of it. Don't you? Like, I should do ASMR. I was looking apart the Quran ASMR with this. For you, Hijab, take down the tweets. Take down the tweets. Take down the tweets. <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> we, we could just do this for our shows <laughs> yeah. yeah uh all right so i guess we can uh we can wrap up now uh one last thing by uh hatem's world says david talk to me born muslim want jesus uh hatem if you go to my if you go go to my YouTube channel, you go to my about section. You there's a, a link there that you can click on to give you my email address. Go ahead and uh, email me. And if you want to have a discussion, if you want to have a discussion live, you can join us with a. You can join me or, or me and Sam Shamoon and have a discussion about any uh, questions you have. And we're happy to do that. So yeah, go ahead and send me an email. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching. It's more where this came from. In the ongoing so much, adventures, everybody. the ongoing adventures of Muhammad Hijab.
Any, yeah. any final advice, and, AP? And Ali Dawa. I would say um, thank you all so much. Thanks for th thanks to the Dawa boys for making this possible. Uh, to that nobody ever sees the Islamic State that they would like to work for. Uh, thanks, every, everybody, for being here. Thanks, thank you so much for your uh, support. Um, I hope you see what's going on. Thanks, everybody, and stay away from Islam. Catch you all later.